Right. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome again to uh, the third day session uh, for this three day event. Um, I just like to, as usual, just to confirm that uh, we can all hear me clearly. And I just want to double check I can hear everyone as well. So I need a volunteer again, someone to just volunteer that you can hear me. I just want to hear you as well uh, before we kick it off. Anyone? Okay, let me. Okay, Frank, we got Frank Olia, Maduka, Maduka. Hello? Yeah, hello, I can hear you. All right, thank you. Can you hear me as well, yeah? Clearly, I can hear you too. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, right, you can meet yourself. Back. All right, so as usual, welcome to day three, and we're just quickly going to go through uh, the regular housekeeping. Uh, if you're new on the platform, uh, this is your first day out of the three. Um, you can see you've got a control panel where you see like an icon that looks like a hand. So you can wave at any point in time if you want to ask any question, or you could drop a um, or you could drop a question as well. You could type in or you wave uh, so that I'll mute you or you can unmute yourself and we allow you to talk anytime or drop in the question within the chat area. So you have the chat area or the question area. You can only drop, drop your question there as well if you don't want to talk or you're not in an environment where you could talk. Um, then we'll be able to, I'll pick it up or anyone on the panel will pick that up, they will notify me and I'll be able to uh, respond to your question at any point in time as we uh, go along. Uh, one more thing I'd like to quickly mention is We've got an area within the control panel called the handouts. Can we see that at all on your mobile, on your iPad, on your laptop? There is actually a section there called handouts. Someone please confirm that you can see handouts uh, within your own view. Yeah, I can Anyone? see it from my view here. Yeah, I can see oh, it. All right. so okay, you, see you see, like we've got three out of five handouts or three handouts. Yes, uh, the overview of the uh, BA techniques, the SQL yeah. syntax, and the business yeah. case. Thank you very much. So, anyone, yeah, now if I put in an handout, then you can download it for your own use, basically. So, the, B, uh, the B business case one is just how a business case looks like, an overview of it, like a template. Uh, BA techniques for those that attended day one. Those are all the techniques that you would need to know as a business analyst anyway. Um, but you don't need to know everything, but those are the techniques available as a BA and some of them are useful for project managers as well. Um, like I said, again, you don't need to know them all. Um, a few of them, I think I did mention in there, about 12 of them that you should very much uh, be aware of that you need at any point in time. And again, for today, I put it on SQL syntax just for your use, not for now, but for sometimes uh, pretty much, maybe you might need it later, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, so we're going to kick off today, but before I go on for today, um, I'd like to quickly sort of find out how many of us um, sort of were around day one, day two, or this today's your first day, and there's a way we always do that uh, before we um, give you the rule of the game, pretty much, it's that sort of housekeeping that we're going to be uh, going through before we kick off. I just quickly ask some questions. So all I do, what I normally do, I send a question around, over to you, the answer as quickly as you can, then we see the response so that I know what and what we need to address for today. If today is your first day, I'll be able to know that, or give attended day one or day two. So I'll just quickly put the first question to say, did you attend the one session? Just a yes or a no. Okay, I'll take that, I'll close that now. So um, what it means is 69% attended the one, cool, that's good. So um, just the one, now out of course, did you attend, maybe some people attended day one and day two, I want to know who attended day one. 
day two. Maybe you attended just day two alone. I answer a yes or a no as well. Okay, I'm gonna close that soon. Right, we'll close it now. Right, close. So 80% attended it too. That's great. That's a very good one. Good one. Okay. Right. Lastly, sorry, did I send that? No, 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 sorry. We attended the two, the one and day two. Okay, maybe just a few of us. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to close that now. So I can move on. Okay, six, seven attended the one and the two. Cool. Thank you very much for that. Right. So for those of us that attended the one, if you attended, so. I'm gone. Okay. What can you still see on the screen? Just want to put it that we check. We've seen the right thing. Right. For those of us that are new for today, today is the first day, right? Um, I'd like you to quickly help us to answer this question. You didn't answer it day one, you didn't answer it day two. You don't have to answer it if you've done it before, yeah? Just for those that are just attending today. So you, have, you didn't attend day one, you didn't attend day two. Today is just your first day. So you please quickly help us to answer this. Again, just a few seconds, I'll just do five more, ten more seconds. You know. Okay, I'm gonna close that now. Share that with us. So quite a lot of us are in business analysis already. So quite a well, good number in project management or related role, none in data analysis. You're in business intelligence, so how come you are in BI but you are not in data? I need to question you on that, right? But anyway, I'm going to hide that. And second question, you ask how to again. If you've done it before, if you think you don't need to do it again, except if you change your mind. Then we may be put. So we might as well just do it again. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to close that again soon. Okay. Closing now. Thank you. Okay, again. So, yeah, uh, that, that shows me quite a lot of us are, well, good number, not a lot, but good number. It's a fair share. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in our tonight, so it's pretty much like a good number of us uh, are interested in tonight's session. Okay, good. Right, so for those of us that attended first day, that's the Tuesday session. Could you please quickly help me with a few questions? Yeah, if you, as quickly as you can, I posted the first one. Or if you know anything about it, you know anything about business analysis, Quickly help me with that, or you attended Tuesday session. Just want to quickly gauge. Uh, 
whatever we picked, basically, just to get our selection or the usefulness of whatever we might have been able to pick. Okay, just quickly, as quickly as you can. Please select the best answer, the one that matches with the best. Right, so I need to give us that too. So yeah, the best answer, the one that you think is the closest to the right answer. All right, cool. I'm gonna close that now. So, right, 83% are right. 27% uh, for some reason, um, yeah. Maybe they weren't around. So 83% are right, so that's the right one. Okay, um, the next question is coming out now. As quickly as you can, select one or more. So in this question, you can actually answer more than one. You can pick more than one answer. So it's a multiple, multi-selectable question, basically. Closing in in five seconds. Okay, I'm gonna close it down now so that we can move on. Share right now. The answer is the the truth of the matter is it's all of the above the five of them are types of business solution oh, all of them so business solution like we said doesn't have to be software development so a software will be the solution to business need it's process improvement or system improvement will be a solution to business need organizational change will be a solution to business need again strategic planning could be a solution Policy development could be a solution. It all depends on what does the business need. Any one of them could be a solution. So it should be all of them. You should have tick all. But if you didn't tick all, right, that's something to put it right in. One more question coming for the ACE. Again, in this question, it's a multi selectable one. Which of the following is a business analysis technique? Select one or more of the following. Closing in four seconds. Right, closing now. Closing. And it's closed. Right, again, SWOT analysis is a technique, interviewing is a technique, use case diagram is a technique, ERD is a technique, you're going to see one tonight, PPM is a technique, they're all techniques, just five out of over 99 techniques. So they're all techniques. Again, if you didn't choose all, right, now you know. Okay, I'll put one more, actually, then I'll be okay. Let's go somewhere now. Right, that should go to the PMs. We attended yesterday's session. That's one for you. Okay, closing up. Good. That's excellent. Which of the following 
is the part of is part of a pro, it's part of project management uh, project life cycle sorry which of the following is part of project life cycle if there's something is missing there is a typo in here which of the following is part of project life cycle right it's going to close in five seconds Again, you could select more than one, select one or more to follow. Right, closing now. Right, so if you didn't select all, again, you missed test and deploy um, phases, yeah, of the project life cycle. All, those are the five stages of the project life cycle. Just keep doing this until us last. It's the last point for everyone, for PMs and VAs. Which of the following is the type of requirement? Select one or more of the following. Mm, that's a bit tricky, actually. But, yeah. Okay, I'm going to close it down again in five seconds so I can move on. All right, that's closing now. Right, so if you're choosing the top four, that's the first four functional requirement, business requirement, non functional user requirement, you're right. Um, if you pick the quality requirement, you're wrong. So the top four are types of requirements. Okay, so just to test our knowledge and to sort of recap some of the things we've done. Now, I'm going to just yeah, stop on the polls there so that we can move on for what we have today. Today is not really going to take, well, it's kind of, it's a bit technical. So for as many people as can pick it up, that would be, that'd be really good for us. Uh, but people that are interested in data analysis and business intelligence analysis, uh, that would be, um, yeah, the, today would be the uh, your day, absolutely. But, BAs and PMs as well, please, I always mention something. If you have experience in data, it is very, it will be very, very good for you. Very good, because I've seen a lot of PMs that struggle sometimes because of the basic data knowledge they don't have, they struggle to understand the project scope. I've seen a lot of BAs struggling and looking for people who took you please help me to get this data because they need to analyze some data. And the, the simple, sort of skill set that you can just easily pick up to just quickly query a database and just get the data to sort of visualize or, or to analyze the data. You're not really analyze it, just to visualize and see how things are. And uh, which will give you more insights into uh, determining or, or coming up with uh, a proper evaluation towards the business uh, solution. Uh, but you may struggle at that point. So it's, it's not too bad, it won't be too bad if you have that little knowledge, you don't need to go in depth. So again, today will be a very good day uh, if you could uh, actually pick that up. Right. Um, so, can we still see my screen? I've shared the result of that. And that. Let me know if you can see my screen. I don't know what you can see. Can you see my screen, please? I want to make sure you can. I'm not too sure. Can you stop? Okay, and someone wants to talk. Emmanuel will do it.
screen is visible. Okay, because I can't see. Okay, fine. All right, if screen is visible, that's okay. Right, so for tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at a roadmap for understanding SQL uh, and becoming a data stroke business intelligence uh, analyst. Now, if you can see my screen clearly, again, just tell me for some reason I can't see it. I always do, but for some reason it's, it's not just, uh, it's not visible I mean, to me, so I can't really guarantee that. But if you can't, that's fine. So again, um, uh, my name is Joe, and I'm an IT consultant specializes in business and business intelligence analysis in project management and in data analysis. Um, like I always say, I am um, a team player. I've got teams locally and um, um, sort of offshore as well um, that I do collaborate with uh, on, a, uh, on a regular uh, regular basis. So um, tonight, if you are new on the platform, um, I've asked you a few questions, which kind of tells me uh, pretty much uh, who you are. That explains to me well enough. It's enough for me to understand who you are. That's that's what I um, I, I, I always do. I, I use that to to sort of just um, capture where you are and pretty much. Um, how I should address things based on um, whatever I've found out uh, about you, which is what I've done. Uh, but one more thing to me, sorry. Sorry, please mute yourself. All right, so one more thing tonight is to uh, sort of do a bit of housekeeping. Uh, like I always, like I just said now, keep uh, as much as possible, keep your environment silent so that it becomes a uh, um, sort of a conducive for all of us. If you have to talk with your end, I'll see that for drop the question. I'll keep an eye on that uh, to answer uh, any question um, as they come through as soon as soon as I can see them actually. Uh, uh, someone asked earlier, uh, which handouts were you talking about? Uh, if you check handouts, there are a lot, there are three handouts there and they are for anyone. If you need them, just download them. They're available for you. For business analysis, uh, there's one for business case, which is for BMs and PAs as well, uh, BA and PMs as well. And there is one for tonight, which is on this of that SQL queries, basically for your use. Uh, it might be related to what we're going to deal with tonight. So again, like I said, participate, ask questions, always ask questions. Please don't afraid to ask questions where you think you don't understand. Yeah, be ready to make mistakes. Don't 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 feel like oh my question is going to look um sort of sort of um. Yeah, so stupid or it's going to look somehow, uh, or people are going to be like, oh, what sort of person? No, please do ask person. That's the reason I wear I do ask person when, uh, when, when I need to, if I don't really understand something. Uh, the good thing to do is to ask person. It's the best place you can, actually. And request a break when you, when, when you need one. And uh, like what we always do, we break the session into three. Yeah, if you didn't come, if we're in around on day one and day two, we break the three sessions. So by, uh, on the hour, basically, we have like a short break like five, seven minutes break on the hour. So eight o'clock, we're gonna have a break. Nine o'clock, we have a break. So that means the break session into three. Section one, we run up to eight, we have a break. The second session picks up to six, five to seven minutes after eight, eight to nine, then we have a break Then the last session goes. The last session always, we break it into two again. I will at least give like 15 minutes. Um, I'll leave like 15 minutes for us to ask questions, attend to us uh, before we finish tonight. And again, tonight, I'm gonna to be giving us some information towards what happens after today, how you can get in touch and what sort of uh, packages uh, you can, uh, uh, if you haven't made up your mind yet, how uh, you can get in touch, you can discuss and give you an advice as much as I can do on uh, what sort of sort of direction you should face. And if you made up your mind already, then we need to still discuss and see how we can move on and quickly get to your destination uh, when you want to. So uh, again, so quickly, what are we here tonight? We're here to understand SQL. Now, but before I, explain to people what SQL is all about. I always like you to understand why do we even need SQL. SQL is, is a, it, it's a query. It's like a programming language uh, that we use to query 
um, a database, basically. It's the language that databases understand. So I always like to quickly explain what a database really means. So again, you don't need it. I run a special course on database management or database administration on the Oracle platform or the Microsoft SQL Server. There's a different package for that. But this is just going to throw some um, a little bit of foundation, like so, so you understand uh, what database is all about. Now, I'll tell you some. I'll tell you something. It might help you as a VA. Sometimes you're working on some CRM or some system that has the back end that stores data, or you're working on some uh, project as a project manager um, that you're dealing with data. They're telling you they're going to extract or data migration project, for example. And, and that's that's one of the projects that I that gets thrown, uh, thrown at me every time. Uh, people throw it at me. The reason is is pretty much my my foundation. So again, if you have that understanding, you can easily jump or contribute to a project uh, that has data related um, uh, sort of activities. So I really recommend that for PAs and PMs as well. But if you then need more outside it, that's a special problem. Like I said, I'm not going to go into in depth so that I'm not to confuse all but it might be too technical for some people. So now I'm going to be learning about our um, relational database management system. So that's what a database is, it has to be relational. I'll tell us why briefly. Uh, we, we then learn about SQL, how we can query the database, how we can easily fetch data out of it. It's going to be after the theory, I always do the practical. So I practicalize it, we see some data together, uh, we see how we can do a lot of things in SQL, how we can retrieve data, how we can simply even query report with SQL. SQL is a tool that allows you to fetch out data, manipulate the data. Now, the core of it is if you are a data analyst, I really recommend that if you've been doing it and you don't do SQL data analysis, please get in touch you need to be able to do that and all you need to know is the analytic functions yeah the analytic functions of sql like those of us have done statistics before like the max the average the the mean the uh, uh, the sort of um, um sort of a sum the count you know those are just a few uh, they, they not even they are so they, they are aggregates the additional functions the list add loads of uh, additional uh, analytical functions of sql that allows you to just fetch data and do some sort of statistical uh, sort of um, uh, summation on them or you get some aggregates basically just via sql you could do the same in excel you could do the same with power bi you could do the same with w you could do the same with quick uh, click view you could do the same with obi or, or, or discover i'll show you i'll show us a few of that again tonight as well but i'll i'll show you that using sql of course you can create a form with sql you can um, employ uh, you, can, you can use the functions to generate or retrieve customized data and you can then export that report to an excel format and polish it more to create some uh, sort of a visualization like your pie chart your bar chart and all of that sort of graphical representation that you might want to come up with um we can then go a little bit further i'm not sure i won't go in depth into that and now you can do a little bit of um in-depth knowledge of sql i'll just show you for those interested i want to put a file of us Someone that is interested in that and then get in touch after that. They move into a bit of Excel, have a look at extract data from X, um, SQL into Excel. How we can then clean the data within Excel, we do data cleansing. Um, that we, we have shown you those three processes. There are three processes we use to sort of um, fetch out the data from start to end, basically. Data cleansing is just one of those activities to perform or one of those functions to perform in between. That to clean your data, then you begin to transform it, put in any filter you want to put in, put in any sort of aggregational uh, or, or analytical function you want to do, any aggregation you want to do on it, do that um, until the data looks okay to you. Then you then visualize it. You have more sort of a view to your data. We do that in Excel. I'll show you some other tools as well you could use, um, like uh, the Power BI, the OBI, as well as I can and discover. I'll show you a few. Um, they're all similar in, in a certain way, but you need to just get the concept. The one going to the full course, if you decide to, then we're going to the integrity of that. Right, that's all we add to that. But what is SQL? Quickly, uh, I trust you. So, if you have any question, please drop it. Like I said, if you don't, if you've never had SQL before, yes, yeah, someone is asked a question. Trying to send email to uh, and to our emails, no problem. If you need, like I said, now don't drop your email on this platform. If you've registered, I'll add your email already. Yeah, it's the email you use to register. If not, please use the email you want on the register. On the register. Yeah. Now I'll use the one on the register to send because I can't. I won't be able to pick it. I can pick the report here, but better I use the one within the register. But I know everybody that's attended or people that register I already know already. So I always send materials across to you. What are the software tools a business analyst should know how to use as a beginner? Right. There are quite a lot of software we dealt with. 
um, initially, uh, just a bit of digression there, sorry, uh, so that I don't miss that out. The law of softwares, again, I'll tell you detail later, but some of the software you need, we categorize them into four. Number one soft, software category that we did are the core softwares for business analysts. What I mean, core softwares, excuse me, are the softwares that VAs need to deliver their, their, their deliverables. Those are your tools, your, your, your tools, your major tools, level one tool that you need to deliver to do your requirements, to do your use case, to do your wireframe, to do your flow charts, to do your process maps. Uh, there, there are a lot of that falls under that category, quite a lot. Microsoft VCO falls under that. The Balsamic Moco falls under that. Um, uh, Blue B Chat falls under that. Axor falls under that. Um, there is uh, there are quite a lot of them. There's Visual Paradigm. Uh, there is even there is Adobe, Adobe XSD. There is I mean, there is quite a lot. I can give you a long list. A long list. Number one of it I would recommend is know how to use your Microsoft VC. Please know how to use because the thing is it has everything in it. Yeah. Now the level two softwares that you will need as a VA, uh, it's not just for you alone. It's like project management softwares. Those are the class of the Jira, the Confluence, the Basecamp, the Trello. They're not your core software, but you need them because as much as the PM needs them as well, is to manage the documentation of project, to produce, to provide visibility of everybody within that project you're working on. It's the collaborative tool basically for documenting projects end to end. Then the next level are your collaborative um, sort of softwares, the likes of Go Webinar that we're using now, Google Hangouts, Google Drive, um, Zoom, WhatsApp, Team, Microsoft Teams, and this. The list goes on and on like that. Those are collaborative tools you need to know. Now, now I'll go into detail now. The last slide, which is level four, are some of the ones we're going to mention tonight. If you I this is that you're going to be dealing with data-related projects, you want to know a bit of data, and you need data visualization and data analytics and visualization tools. And so such as I'll be mentioning tonight. Okay, so I'll move on. What is SQL? Yeah, that's the reason why we're here tonight. SQL simply means SQL. Yeah, now that's how you pronounce it. The way it's written is SQL. And that's how we pronounce SQL. Now, but the actual meaning is structured query language. It's a structured query language, and that is the only language that a database understands. What I mean, the database, anyway. Microsoft database, only SQL. Oracle database, only SQL. Yeah, my SQL database, SQL. Now, the database is an engine that manages data. Now, a lot of people don't, a lot of organizations store their data within the spreadsheet. That's not an organization, that's an also, trust me. Now, I've been approached by organizations that will be like, oh, yeah, we, it's a big organization, but all their database, all their data are just scattered. Microsoft Access, some are in spreadsheets, they just come on. I feel like that's a massive project. It's not a project I've been moving into very soon. Yeah, because they have data everywhere, everywhere. If they need uh, an information regarding that program, they go, oh, where is that? Where is that? There's a spreadsheet for that. In fact, there's a, there's a folder, a shared folder that has all the data. So that you store them, you set them in a shared drive. Come on. on that, Spreadsheet that is not a good database management um, um, uh, technique. No, it's not. I, I won't recommend that to anybody. Now, if you just for you personal, you can store your data on your laptop within a spreadsheet. But when you're moving on to be a business, and other, or as, the, 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 the bigger you grow, the more you need, uh, the more robust your system should be, basically. So, SQL is used to manage databases. Uh, for on different platforms. That's what it is. Yeah. What is the database? It's a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily assessed, managed, and updated. So collection of data. Now, collection of information. Yeah. So when you give information, now there is thought in one way or the other. Now, everything you give, your name, your phone number, your ID, those are informations. Now, information collected together and organized becomes data. So now data are just collective, in collected, I mean collect collection of information. That's what they have. Bits and pieces of information joined together to become data. Now, how does it make information? There are pieces of data, pieces of letters that make sense. And when someone reads them, yeah, it can make sense out of that. That's what is an information. Yeah. It's a pieces of letters joined together. Now, when someone sees it, to you is nothing. I, I put something A, B, C, one, two, three. When you see it means nothing. To me, it's an information. Why is it cool? The pieces of letter I put together, but to everybody, oh now what's that? Oh, this one with it. I don't even know what it is. But to me, it's an information. Now, when I store it, I collected them together, I align it with what it means or what it relates to. 
becomes a meaningful data. Now, in this world where we are, in this world where we are, you have it everywhere. People have said it, it's no joke. When you are data oriented, I tell you that, and that's why I recommend it to anyone. You don't need to be in there, have an understanding of what data is all about. Very crucial, very crucial. If you need that, please get in touch. Get in touch, let's rub minds together. Now, I don't know all, the little I know, I can pass it on to you. You can rub minds together. Now, data is crucial in this generation. Almost all projects has data related to it. Almost all departments need data. Now, even people that thought data wasn't useful, now they see the insight they could get out of data. And that's how powerful data analysts are becoming. And that's how powerful a business analyst that is data centric or that is data, um, that, that has the data knowledge can be. It could be that extra skill set you have to make you sell it. Right. That's why databases, I'll move on quickly. Now, databases have to be relational. Now, I'm just creating some platform for us. It has to be relational. What do you mean by relational? It has to be relational. That's what we mean by relational. The relational is like a relationship. Databases have to relate with each other. I'll show you what I mean by being relational um, very soon. There's going to be a picture you'll see. It means, um, I'll, let me give you a scenario. Let me explain in the layman language. I always, there's a way I always explain it. I always break it down in the layman. Now, consider your house. Your house is a server or a database. Because why is it a database? Because you store things in there. People stay in the house. Now, apart from people that stays in the house, there are other things that we have. Your furniture are there, your kids are there, the kitchen has its equipment, the bedroom has its equipment, a lot of things in the house. That's how a database looks like. It's full of all different sorts of data. Now, how do you store the data? Would you take your cooker to your bedroom? No. Now, why nothing? I mean, it's, it's naturally it's just sort of me like when a cooker comes in, it goes to the kitchen because the kitchen is meant, yeah, to store the cooker. Now, when a bed comes into the house, nothing, I mean, it's just a natural thing. Everybody knows the bed goes into the bedroom, except if your living room is like an open one where you, if, you, if you're bringing in a sofa bed, now maybe you put it in the living room. As far as I'm concerned, that's a sofa. It only becomes a bed at some point in time, maybe later at night when it's needed. That's how a database operates. Databases have different sections. They are categorized. And what we are categorized is they are broken into tables. Under a database is a table. Database is stored in a server. Yeah, that's the top level. Under the server is a database. Each database has tables. You might have one table. You might have two tables. You might have 100 tables. It's just like a house. Your house can be one bedroom. So you have one bedroom, one kitchen, one living room. And some people have two living rooms, two kitchens, and seven bedrooms. So the bigger the data you want to set up, or the bigger the categories of data you want to set up, the more you break them down into meaningful or, or, or meaningful sort of platforms. Yeah. Now I have 10 beds. Can I store 10 beds in one room? No. Now, because bed stays in the room, it means I need like 10 rooms to store 10 beds. That's how database works. You want to store a data, but the data looks too cumbersome to store in this particular table. You break it down into meaningful platforms. An organization has different departments. Would you store the data in a single table? No. Now, sales and marketing are not, they are related in a way. They are related in a way, but they're not completely related. So I will store sales data and I'll store marketing data, but they have something in common. Yeah, because sales will give marketing some insights to do marketing. This is not moving. Could you please start us? That's the relationship we're talking about. Your tables will then need to be related one way or the other. If they're not related, it's not a good database. So database has to be connected, which means once I enter your house from the living room, I should be able to enter the kitchen. Now that's, that's, that's the concept. I, I need to capture, to, to capture. So when I enter, the kitchen room has to meet the kitchen. One way or the other, I need to be able to navigate back from the kitchen, whether through the living room, to the bedroom, or there should be another entrance upstairs. So I, I don't know how you're going to do it, but all the rooms in the house has to be connected. One way or the other. One has to lead to the other. One may lead to one, one may lead to two. Another one there can lead to another two. One way or the other, they will lead. I'll tell you. So I know you as a person, but through you, I'm meeting two people. I can know three people. So I have my brand, single me relating to three people. Then three people are related to two other people. But one way or the other, because I know you, 
when we're meeting, are we indirect, directly or indirectly? I would know the other people as well. It's a link that links all of us together. And that's how that database is operating. And that's what we mean by relational database. It has to be linked one way or the other. So tables. Now, how do we rate them being linked? Now, the process of linking tables in database is what we call normalization. You normalize it. So when you've added before, maybe and when you are at the uni, or I don't know how if you've added before. Normalization, I won't break that down. It's for people that are interested later. We normalize data based into a short normal form, basically, before it's set to it. But we don't need that for now. But normalization means they are related. Now, when they are related, that means if I make a change in table one, table four will fill it. It knows that I already changed table one, why they are linked maybe by table two. Table two links table one to table four. So when I make a change in table one, table four already knows I've made a change, but it doesn't really bother her now. But when it needs something, it knows. Now, table one now has that thing that I've just added to it. Now, yesterday it wasn't there. It needed this, but it couldn't ask table one. But today I've updated table one. So now you know table one has it. Tomorrow it means you are, oh, table one, that data you got yesterday, can I have it? You understand? That's the relationship, that's how it works. And that's how databases are connected. Now, all right, so I've jumped from normal form. Uh, I, I won't talk about data types, except you're really interested in data. Yeah, data has different types. I'll simply put your phone number and numeric. Yeah, so when I'm entering phone, it has to be number. That's a data type, numeric type. Uh, your email could be after numeric. I mentioned that earlier. So again, it's useful sometimes for BAs. I've seen a lot of BAs come to me in my organization to say, oh, Joe, if you are working on this, how can I create a data model? Now, data models is essential because it's one of the key things uh, that, that BAs do. So we want to create ERD, for example, integration relationship model. It's a data model. Each data field needs to be specified. For so that data, these are the data field that we need on that project. The project needs to be created. It's going to be capturing people's detail, for example. It's one of the projects I'm working on. Now, if anybody is interested, if you're joining up, for example, I'll show you on that project. It's very big one. Now, if you're capturing details, so what details is it going to be capturing? Developers need to know how to configure it. The back end needs to be structured. And it's going to be capturing detail. When you are telling technical guys of what data you are capturing, you need to specify the data type. So I'm going to be capturing the name, the email, the that. They will need, oh, email. What do you mean email? How is it going to appear? Now, that's the, where the data model comes in. So when I put in the data structure, I put the data field. I put the data type, that's second column. I put the data size, the third column, and I'll tell you if it needs to be empty or not. That's, we call it knowledgeable. I won't go into that again. If you are interested in this, then we need to take it further. So we won't bother that with it. Data type is simply telling you that data, what type is it? Is it an alphabet? Is it a number? Is it an alphanumeric? There are other types. Is it a decimal? Is it a float? Is it, I won't go too much into detail, but that, that's, that's all you need to know for now. That's what we call by. We'll my data type. So I'll jump data type. I've quickly gone through that. Right. So now, quickly, if you're going to be dealing with SQL again, I'm not going to dwell too much on that, except you want index. Um, we have different types of query languages. There are a language that you speak to ask for information. So when I speak to you, oh, could you please give me that? I'm asking for something. Yeah. And there's a way I'll tell you, oh, please help me to do that. I'm telling you to do something. They say, there's a language to, retract, to retrieve information. There's a language to input information. Yeah, that's it. So there is a way I will talk to you. Whatever I say, you know I ask you to do something for me. Yeah, now there's the way I'll talk to you. You will easily understand that I'm asking for something from you. Now, when you are asking the database to do something, that we call it database definition language. You want to define the data. like. Please, database, create a table for me. I'll say create database Joe, as simple as that. And I'll click run. And the data will be created at database. Pam, we will name it Joe. It's simple. And when I say alter database Joe, Pam, it will do it. I'll, I'll say alter database Joe as whatever language I put in there, it will just apply it straight away. Yeah. And that's the essence of the handout. I'm going to go, we're going to go a little bit into that. But that's the essence of the handout. I, uh, one of the handouts I drop on the platform. It's just to tell you how those queries work. So it's data definition language. So tell the database to define something, to do something. So there's data manipulation language. You want to use the language to manipulate the data. It's pretty much those languages we use to retrieve data. That's what you need, actually. If you need the DDL, the DDL is for someone that wants to know about database administration or SQL developer. 
that wants to really now I do all that. I create table, create database because when I'm testing a data or when I'm working on a project, I run a, a lab for myself. Before I ask it to do it, I've already created it myself. I've seen the table I going to look at, then I structure it, then I ask it to do yours. Now the reason why I do that is because I've got the skill set. Don't have to. Now, for retrieving data as simple as that, that's what I'm really much interested. I'm much interested in tonight that I really need us to get. And that's the DML, right? I'm not going to do too much on that. It's only for it's an eye opener if you are interested in it, if you know you have the capability to do. And again, get in touch is one of the packages um, we offer. Okay, um, this data control language. Okay, now DML, not just retrieve, DML is manipulation. You could use it to change things, like to update, to delete, to merge, to lock. So all those are data manipulation. Data control uh, is like what you use to authorize or to, to grant or to revoke something. Else. So it's the data control. It's like the security part of the SQL. So as the database administrator, I could do all that like, graphically on the system. I could show you, I'll show you something like that, where you could set up users, add a user, I've set up an account for a user, yeah, and I add a user to a role. That role already has the permission level. So if I add it to a role of a database administrator, you have the read and write assets to the system. But there's a role that will add it to you only have the read, you can only retrieve information. When you say create database, you say sorry, you're not authorized to do that. And we use DCL to define that sometimes if you want. Again, that is not for someone that is not interested in the deeper level of that. This transaction control, when you're putting a data in, you need to be committed. Sometimes on some platform like SQL, like the Microsoft platform. Again, I'm not gonna dwell too much on that. Now, let's go a little bit into the structure of what I've been talking about. I've talked about uh, um, uh, what a relational database management system is all about and what it means. And that's the picture that shows you. Uh, Oracle Server has databases in it. Inside the database are different tables. Now, all those tables are related. I'll tell you how they are related now. Um, you will see here we have, for example, we have like um, an employee table and we have the department table, right? Now, an employee table has the, the name of the employee, basically, and the department we have the department. Now, it happens everywhere, in your organization, in your school, at the uni, everywhere, especially where I can. Everywhere they capture your data, that's how it's stored. It's stored to link. That's why when I know some information about you across the board, I know everything about you. Now we call something the primary key, and we call something the secondary and the foreign key, and that's a relationship. Uh, on that's what makes the database relational. Uh, I'll give you an example. This table will explain it. So in your organization, you have an employee table. So when you're onboarded onto the organization, there's a place to store your details, all your personal details, your PII. Yeah. They store it somewhere. Now, when they store it there, then they assign it to a department. There's a complete table that has that information. For all the department, every department has a code. So IT3 is maybe IT security or whatever. They, there's a way they do it. So if I work in the IT, it doesn't mean you're working at the same department. IT is a department that has multi departments, I mean, multi departments under it. So infrastructure is a department within IT, networks is a department within IT security. It's a department within IT, the service desk is a department within IT, the PMO office is a department within IT, the testing department is a department within IT. And they all have different codes so that HR understands where you are being onboarded to. Now, this is how it works. Your name is not going to be on the department, but your department ID will be against your name in your employee record. So I'm employee 11. 101, my name is there, blah, blah, blah. Somewhere on the column there, I will have department code zero or IT04. That's it. Department code in department table or department ID, for example, here. Yeah. Let's just see what we have. I'm in department 20 because I'm an employee 101. Yeah. Now, employee 101 belongs to department 20 in the, in the employee table. Employee table, we have a column called department ID. We will just say that. It's a guest it's staying there until it's needed. It's just like it's a foreigner, basically. That's why we call it the foreign key. So now, when you need a record, we want to know what department I have. Now, 20 will not tell you the department. But 20 that is a guest or a foreigner in the employee table can then look at the department table. So when I say, oh, could you please tell me what department? So select department name. Yeah, 
I'll select select first name, last name, or select employee ID, first name, last name, department code, then comma department name. Don't forget department name is not in the employee ID. I've selected some data from the employee ID. Why now need to know the department name? Because 10 or 20 doesn't make sense to me. What's 20? I need to know what name the department is. I will now have to select that from employee comma department where the department code. Now, where employee dot department code equals department dot department code, that's the link there. Now, that's the query I've just written. We're going to practice this very soon. I want to know the detail of the employee and its corresponding detail in the department table, where that code that belongs to departments that's an employee, where it equals the one in the file. So it's a merge. Now, consider your mathematics where you do. Um, I know you've done it a lot. We've seen a lot of things when we're going up. If you've done anything like this before, the intersections, I don't know if you can see that. I can use another color for you, which is going to help you. If you've done mathematics very well and you're good at statistics, you should have been an SQL test. That's what I'll tell people because everything about database is related. All the things. Databases is all about. It's all about relationship between different tables. What's the relationship between table A, table B, and table C? So something is related to the three table, and that is this section in the middle there. Yeah, that's A intersection B intersection C. And that's how database operates. So I can get a common denominator, a common information from three tables. It's just a query I'm going to write. Now, how am I going to write the query? And what do you think the actual query is going to work? Why? Because the tables are relational. There's something that links them together. And that's what I need to find. I need to find that ID that is in one table that belongs to another table. So every table, now not all. Now, you might have 10 tables. Now, one way or the other, the 10 will be related. Table one might be related to four, five, six. It was not related to seven, eight, nine, ten. But table seven is related to eight, nine, and five, six. So it kind of works in a way like so. Now, the expertise there is for you to sit down and put a query together like a mathematician, and that's what it is like. I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, it's only people that are good in maths that will easily, you can easily be a data analyst. Why? It's only, they are all statistical. All your statistical functions are what you use in this case. Same. Max, mean, the, the hard rate, the whatever, the variance, the standard deviation, that everything is in SQL. That's what we do. So you're looking at data, but using those analytical statistical functions, we call it analytical functions, to generate some meaningful results from data. Simple. Now, when data becomes complicated, mathematics, maths will sort it out for you. Sometimes when I'm relating with, there's a senior colleague that I used to work with. Now, what, the way he thinks, he thinks high-level mathematically. Like, the way he thinks, be like, Joe, that's data. I'll be like, sit down. I'll be like, oh, yeah. If not sit me down, you'll be like, you know what, Joe, remember your maths. And, and I was like, oh, that's true. And that's how I got to understand the concept of SQL and the analytics side. I'm not interested, now I know about management. I'm not too much interested in that now. Now, the core of it is if you can fetch good information out of data, it's going to make sense to you. I move on to you. Two minutes, we're going on break, right? So we have different sort of databases. Microsoft, my SQL, Oracle, not interested now, except if you want to detail. I told you what a table is like. So databases store tables. The table is like that room in your house that stores certain data. The table stores specific information. And consider a table in Excel. It has rows and columns. So every table will have rows and different columns. Your columns are your data fields. Data field like your first name, last name, email, phone number, that, those are your data fields. Now, below each data field, which is column, are different, those are the real data, the values. And values are stored in rows. And that's how it is in database. So I'm not going to go too much in that. Eventual primary key. Primary key is the identifier of a table. Every table has a unique number. That's why everyone, I don't know where you are. Now, if you don't have a unique number where you have, fine. Now, every in some countries, we have unique IDs. For example, your social security number, your national insurance number, they are unique. That's your primary key. Simply put, it's your primary key. Now, it defines you in the citizenship detail or citizenship table. That's where the story, that's your primary key. Again, just like an employee, as well, you have your employee number. That's your primary key. That's your identifier. It's what identifier. I don't need your name. I need your primary key. It tells me everything about you. Okay? I've mentioned what SQL is. 
mention some tools. I'm going to show you this practically when we come after the break. Oracle developer, we'll go a little bit in that. I'll just show you this. Um, that, that's what we mean by the, uh, the, 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 relation, the relationship between data. That's what makes database relational. Um, I told you the other time, I said, I may know one person, that one person may know two people. Now, there is a different sort of relationship. There's one to one relationship, there is one to many, there is many to one. So, a table can relate to many tables, or a data within a table, one column can make many relationships. Now, but in this concept, we're looking at tables. One table has many relationships, which means the ID of that table it has many. Now, I'll give you an example a product ID is related to a product data table. Product is one to many because that ID can have many sizes. Make sense? So I have product 11007. That's the product ID. In the product table, it's just one entity. But when you go to the product detail table, it has different skills or different barcodes. Now, each barcode, each skill represents each size. That same product has size 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It has kid size, it has female size, male size. Now, that's a one to many. That table has one to many, which means one product can have many product details. Make sense? Please capture it, grab it. And that's what relationship between tables are. So it could be one to one. So we've got to be able to decide, I mean, to descend that or to understand that. Um, sometimes when you have a little bit of uh, understanding into data and database. Right. After our break, we're going to kick off with a bit of practical. I'll just show you what we've done practicalize a little bit. Like I said, again, tonight might be too technical for some people. It's just an eye opener. Uh, if you're interested, there is a, there's, there are two or three channels. We could go on SQL before we move into the data. All right, see you in five, six minutes.
All right, you're welcome uh, back everyone. So um, we continue from um, where we stop. Uh, we're talking about database, um, what SQL is, what a database is, uh, the structure of a database, I'm trying to explain that, how it has to be relational and what relational database means and what normalization means. And in being relational, I've also explained um, that relational means they are related by the presence of a primary key as a foreign key in another table. Uh, it's just so that um, um, we, we could, it, it could be useful for one thing or the other at some point, and that's what makes database uh, meaningful. If it's not relational, then it's not a database. It's not well, it's not a manageable database. Um, uh, again, I've told us if it has to be relational, you have to define the sort of relationship one to many, many to one, or many to many, and that's what it looks like what you're seeing on the screen now. Again, if you need to go a little bit in depth into that, yeah, get in touch, uh, we could take it uh, for that so that we don't bore people that just need basic knowledge, uh, not an in depth knowledge. Okay, so uh, uh, we're moving on now. So, as, like I said, we're going to be doing some uh, practicals. Um, um, uh, I've told us about data definition language, which is what you've seen on the screen. It looks like a select statement. Select statement is part of the data definition language. It's just like it is select. Select means take something out. Yeah, you select, you, you, you pick basically. So, uh, and that's the same thing it does in SQL. Now, there's some other one. If you look at the example you're seeing on the screen, select asterisk from whatever, the table. And that's the syntax. I've shown us an example. I've got a few databases here. I'll, let's start with Microsoft. So this is a Microsoft database. Uh, it's going to show on your screen in a minute. Um, that's a Microsoft SQL Server. It's a, it's, it's a server for managing this database. It's a software for managing database. So some organizations use Microsoft. So it's a lot of, now it's a role on itself. I've taught a lot of people, I've trained people on being SQL Server database administrator. Now that's being able to manage this. So again, if you're interested in that, it's completely outside this course but it's too much in depth uh, into just Microsoft. It's like manage understanding this software. That's what it's all about. Again, there's another database that is how we call Oracle database. Uh, the Oracle database is, you're going to see that on your screen very soon as well. Um, yeah, that's Oracle. Again, it's the same. Whatever syntax you write in, data, in Microsoft, you can write the same thing similar in Oracle platform. So depending on which one the organization is involved. SQL is SQL. If you know it, you know it. As simple as that. Now, this is another database coming up on your screen. It's called my SQL. The same thing I can write select asterisk from. It's the same. You can see it identifies each one. If you have a database set up there, it's going to work the same way. All right. So let's like quickly jump into the Microsoft one. I just want to quickly explain to you um, when I'm sort of fetching data. I just use that too. We, we do a lot in Oracle, but let's start with Microsoft. So under Microsoft, I, I've logged that on. If I reopen it, yeah, there's no need to reopen it. Now. I said you're looking for index. So uh, now, now I've opened it up. I've signed in with my detail. Now it's allowed me in, and it's showing me that's the server, that's the database. You're not interested in that. Under a database is where we have the tables. So we have the system database, and we have all these tables inside. There are tables. Each area of the database has a table because you can have a single database for an organization. You just have different schemas under that database. Schema is a container. It's like you can have in your kitchen, like consider your bedroom as a schema. For example, your bedroom could be seen at a table, but when it's bigger than the table, that is a bigger container that has many tables inside, yeah? So if you have a bigger bedroom, consider it as a schema. Within your database of your house, you can have a schema, your living room or your bedroom. In your bedroom, there are different tables. A table could mean where your bed is. A table could mean where you arrange your shoes. A table could mean where you arrange your, your shoes, uh, your, 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 your dresses, your tops, your innerwares. Each one has different section. And what each section holds is, is completely different from what the other section holds. That's how tables are arranged. You don't want to store a customer detail in the same table as a product detail. It's, I mean, I won't, I won't even, now, what, the moment I see, you know, the, 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 the data, the table is named after the product it owns. Well, not all the time, because I'm going to show you some complex tables. You can get some relation. It's very difficult to understand the naming convention, but 
you need a good naming convention to name table. For example, if table is storing, if you're using it for product, I'll call it product table, simple. Or product information table. So everybody knows by the time they hear that table, they know it's for product information. For example, I'll say employee table. So it's an employee detail table. That's how it should be. But whatever the case is, number one thing you have to know is SQS syntax looks easy and straightforward, but you need to understand the name of the table before you can retrieve. You can't, if you don't understand my house, you don't know where I store things. So what I tell people, so people come to me and say, oh, yeah, I want to query this. And the first question you need to know is the structure of the database. You didn't create it. I didn't build the house. How can I come into your house and start telling you where things are? No, you have to tell me how things are arranged. Now, the moment I know how they are arranged, so I know where to go when I'm looking for stone, after you've shown me, I won't know until I ask you. And that's how database is. You ask first, then they tell you, oh, that's the table to go to. Then your SQL knowledge has nothing to do with you not knowing the table. My SQL knowledge is the syntax I can write. You need to tell me, I need to ask you, oh, I'm looking for this data. Where can I find it? Or you tell me, oh, yeah, there's a table that owns that. Or it's called XYZ. Fine. Leave the rest to me. I will go on the database and I will retrieve that data half of that table. Yeah, that's how you do it. Right. So I'm going to look for a table name and I'll just simply run a simple query. So we have tables here, um, systems table, and we have a table called DBO, feedback, whatever. Let's just pick one. Let's say SQ monitor, whatever it is. You see how it runs now. So I'll click on the session. I'm not going to explain all these three different parts to you because you're not really going to in depth. Now, the thing about it is there's a path for connection. That's the connection part. That is the ribbon on top, which you do all the functionality will be picked up here. And that is your workspace. This right hand, those are the three aspects. And that's the detail. That's your result thing. Four aspects. Your connection, this is where you do all your connection. When your connection is done, all the things you are looking for will be there. These are the functions you need on top. You want to save it, you want to edit, you want to pick any, you need on top. This is the area you are currently working. All your query will be written on top of here. And here is where you're going to see your results. Okay. So when I'm picking one, I can actually say I need a new query window. I want to work on a completely new one. So you can have multiple query windows open. Now, because I want to say, let me use the whole crew, select asterisk from. I need to know now that's the syntax. Now, if you don't know anything, no select all from SQL tonight. It's anybody can know that. Select all, all is asterisk in database. When a database sees that asterisk, asterisk is on your laptop. That's the sheet where it differs anyway. It's sheet eight on mine. I think it's common in some. Sheet eight is asterisk. Yeah. So all that means all everything. It, it gives you everything in that thing. Select all from. Then I'll start typing BBO. I want to try that table. The good thing about database is the way it's asking BBO is going to suggest. It's going to now it reads basically it read it, 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 it type reads basically. It's going to read what you're typing. Yeah. And it tells you, it gives you suggestions similar to what you're trying to type out. You can see I've written DBO dot. It's telling me a lot of stuff starts with DBO dot. Which one do you mean? SQT monitor. That's the one I want. Just double click. And that's it. I want to double click now. There are a lot of shortcuts to run a database. Yeah, monitor. There's a lot of shortcuts. I press a lot of shortcuts, but I won't go to teach you about shortcuts. And sometimes, rule of thumb, put a semicolon. It's just so when I write another query down there, it separates the two queries. Yeah, so rule of thumb, please. A lot of people don't do that. Even people with a lot of you know, years of experience. But if you get used to it, 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 it saves you because it could be that single error. Sometimes it gives people issues, like it gives you like a headache. You're looking for because database, sometimes when you run it, it's giving you error. You don't know where the error it might just be a full stop as an error in your SQL and you could spend an hour to locate that. So now rule of thumb separate if you finish a query, put a semicolon, then you just execute. That's it. Just execute that. And that's it all in the table. You can see the result. In that table, that's all it has. Yeah, let's try something else that has more data. So we want to add DBO dots. SQT underscore. Let me check this again. Let's educate that. It's just one liner. So I need something that has more data. Fallback. Let's check fallback DB. Double click on that. I put my second column as you from execute. Uh, just one line. Okay, which one asks for the one line? Then? Let's check the first one. I just want to quickly run DBO MS replication. Okay. MS replication. It's not my report. It's, that's what they have. That's what that's the old data that I need. Okay, fine. This one has about three lines. Okay. So that's the first thing you do in this. So now sometimes you want to fetch data. I'll tell you how it runs. 
Now, when I want to, the reason why I'm fetching the data is because there's a requirement somewhere, there's a request. Someone needs to understand something. I'm working on a thing, on a project, and they say, oh yeah, can I get a report? Uh, can, I, can you give me, can I get how many products did you sell last week? That's a requirement. You want to know how many products that was sold last week? Did you mean Monday to Friday? Yeah, you know, just last week ending, oh, from the first of the month to the week ending, so, so day. Okay, that's all you need find. So I'll go into database based on the requirement. Now, where do I get product data? That's the first question. So you want products and the sales. Now, where do I get sales data? Does the sales data tell me the products? Now, I'll look into the sales data. So the first thing I'll first do is I'll go into the, so I know where the product data is. I go the product table, X, Y, Z, fine. Okay, what of sales? Oh, that's the log D of sales log five. Okay, fine. So I know the two table names that I need to do that, the product and sales. I see the relationship between them. Or if one table has all the data I need, and for the first thing, the, the core of my requirement there is the sales. I look into the sales table, select all from six, start from all. You want to see all first, bigger picture. Select all, then you now begin to filter. It's just like you have a filter and you are filtering based on what you need. Now, I'll tell you how to filter. There are conditions we put in here. So when I select all from, the filtering in SQL is where condition. We call it where condition. Again, if you need it, uh, you need to go a bit more in depth. So I'll say where, let's, let's just pick something. I'll start from the simple where value. Now, when you say where condition, your data field, which is a column on top, is the parameter you want to filter by. It's just like Excel. You want to filter Excel, you filter a column, and you select the value you need in that column. Simple as that. So where value is a column here, yeah. Where value equals just like mathematics one, and I'll run it. It's still giving me everything. Why? Because the value in all the fields. Yeah, so for one, all of them has one value. Okay, let's try something. Where value not equal, if FQL not equal is that sign, greater than and equal, to, greater than and less than together. Yeah, that is not equal to in this. And those are the things, simple things. Now, you could easily find all these things. It's on the handout I've sent to us, everything that the operator, we call them operators, equal to less than, greater than, less than or equal to, just like your mathematics is all there. But not equal to could be. This, now I'll run that first and I'll tell you another one. Run, you can see I've got it, no results because there is no one that has any other value. They all have value one. So there's no line except not. So not equal to could be, again, another operator for not equal to is your, your exclamation mark and equal to. That's a not equal to as well. That is going to give me the same result. So when I remove that and say equal to one, then it gives me all the result back. I could say greater than or equal to one. Yeah, it's going to give me everything because you still have equal to one. But if I say less than, sorry, less than or equal to one, it's still going to give me everything. It's just simple mathematics. That's how it runs. So now we've given that. Let's try another sort of operator. Um, I'll just quickly teach you something again. Where now there is something in this field called the white card. White card is like it's a white card. When you throw it, it looks for anything. That matches that that matches the 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 preceding or or the leading alphabet or number. I don't know if you So you could throw a white card. The white card retrieves all, just like all as well. Anything that looks similar, it returns it back to you. I'm going to run the white card for you so that you understand. I could say where opt name. Opt name is a field. It's a data field. Where opt name. It's going to give me a suggestion. Okay, it's not seeing that. Okay, yeah, the one is there. So that's why it's, yeah, where up name, yeah, like. Now, in that place, the operator is like. I'm not too sure of what I'm looking for, but I know what it's that. I can look for in the database and say, oh, could you please give me all the value in an employee table where first name looks like John, whatever. I don't know their last name, but the, I know the first name is John. I'll just say where first name is like, where first name like M E. It starts with M E, but I don't know what value. White card is your that's a white card, the percentage sign. But I have to put that in a code, it's a string. Yeah, the programming in FPL, because it's going to give you on the line. Now let me run that for you because you're going to see what's going to happen. It says message error level 15, state one line two, incorrect syntax near. Pull up. There's an incorrect syntax there because SQL will tell you, but the other thing is, can you figure out the error? That's the question. But well, I know the error is because when I set up a string, I put it in the quotes.
And let's see how, how that works out now. Let's see if it works, yeah? Okay, still giving me MP. Okay, it might be typo error, just give me a minute. ME percentage, put it. Let's do that. Okay, yeah, now, now, it's, now you understand it here. So where the off name looks like ME whatever, I know it starts with ME. But I don't know what ends it. So it's giving me anything that looks like I start with ME followed by anything. So if you have, so you could use that. That's something that could be useful for you. In the, quite a lot of, I mean, all these are things you just know. It's just like when I tell you about techniques as well. You know the technique, you don't know when you need it. But when you need it, you figure it out. Now, don't get me wrong. You could, if you don't use it for a long time, you may forget. But the fact that you use it regularly. Now, there are some functions or some operators that you just can't forget. That you just can't forget. If you're in the line, you won't forget it. There are some bigger or sort of in-depth analytical functions that you may be like, oh, like before I started using list add, list aggregation, so list of the aggregates, it's like a concatenation function that can put together for you four columns as a single row. So it's a function. So I have I have a data, but it has 20 rows. But now they want it in a report, but they want it as just a single value in a report. But it's a 20 row data. How can I put it together? I did a research into that and I discovered this ag aggregation function, analysis function. And I introduced it. It took me like, oh, I'm telling you, the day I did that, it was like, I should actually put it down. Some of my, <laughs> some of my achievements. Like, nobody has done it before. But they gave it to me and I took up the challenge. It took me three days, but I got it done. Now, since that day, I knew another at least ad as a function. And I know what it does, and that's it. It stays there, and that's how we operate. So this, these are simple SQLs. So when you say where something is what, something, then you could go on to say where that is that, and if I add more conditions, yeah, more where conditions, and uh, my other conditions to follow, and say um, if I say and value, yeah. Which is that one greater than one? Definitely, it's not going to give me anything because anything that has LP has only one value. So when I execute that, no error, but there's nothing like that. Yeah, the only value we have there is one. That's what it means. So but if I ask if less than or equal to one, then it returns that back to me mathematically. If it's not less than one, then it has to be equal to. So whichever one, it returns back to me that single line. So you could have more sort of. Um, Filtering, that's we call it conditions, more conditions added. So you select all, they are beginning to filter based on the bigger picture, into drilling it down to where I'm going. Then the next thing that we then do there is let me go back to where I'm coming from. So I could run the first row alone by just selecting it. I don't need to do anything. When you select one row out of three, it only thinks in that the, the database only picks the selected one and it runs it. So it ignores the other two. But without selecting that, if I just click that, it takes the condition of the other two as well. The challenge because of this column. That's the end of the statement. But if I select the first line, it ignores the other two and it runs that first row alone. So now this is it. But I want to do something. Yeah. I want to then say, okay, select all that. And I say order by op value or op name. I want to order by op name BSC desk. Let me put a semicolon there to end that statement. Execute. Incorrect syntax. Okay. Let's see. Okay, let me put semicolon there. Execute. Line 15. Okay, let's look for where the error is. Right. Can you see the reason? <laughs> Okay, and I need to I need to find out that again. Sorry, it's giving me error there. But when I select that, it's running. Okay, because I have another seven column there. That's it. That's the reason. Yeah. Okay. So it's running that for me now. So the, what I'm saying there is you order by that column. Now, what I mean order by, the order by by default, all it does is it order, orders it in ascending order. Now, when I run the query first, let's see the difference there. You can see that transactional is the first one on the list, then merge, then security model. But when I order by that column, ordering means arrange it, 
arrange in ascending order. But I could say arrange ascending is just ASC in SQL. Yeah. But by default, if you don't say it, it knows ascending. Default is ascending. But if I say Oh, sorry. Desk. I couldn't spell descending with the desk. <laughs> the descending order then goes the other way around. It puts T on top and it does that. That's the lower ground. Now, now because it's alphabetical now, it goes alphabetically like which one is on top, which one should come below. So start from A, ascending go from A to Z, descending will come back from Z back to A. If it's a number, it arranges it by in order as they ascend from one upward or from upward down to one. And that's how we do. So those are some of the things, simple stuff we need to know. How to select, how to filter, where condition, and this and that, and you order it. Basic. So how to select all from a table, where a condition is this and that, and this is this, and order by. That's simple. It's one thing you can do on a regular basis. Let's go through a bit into a bigger data. Let's go through the bigger data. So I'm, I'm switching over to same thing we've done into SQL. Don't be scared. If you see some query I've written, then uh, you, you want to you want to run. Trust me. <laughs> you want to run. But again, people that have known me before today, and when they see this, then they should be able to tell you anybody can do it. Now, because the thing is, it's not about what you studied at the uni. Sorry, it's not. It's about what you want to know. And how I mean, how serious are you to know it? That's, that's as simple as that. You could know all this if you're really very serious in the space of a year, everything I've been teaching you from three days ago. If you want, it, it's just what you want to know, you will know. If you don't, if you're not interested, you will know it. And that's how life is. So anyway, let's move on. I'm going to open a fresh page. Let's go into a fresh page and I'll just quickly, let me see if I'm still connected. You know, if I'm connected, I'll run this query. Just a minute. Uh, okay, I don't think. Okay. Okay, I've lost connection. Okay, it's simple. Simple is I'll disconnect first. Disconnect. So it wipes everything off. Then I'll just connect. Then it comes back alive. It happens in database if you've been up for a long time or I've switched applications or I move my laptop if I'm at work and I move my system away to different places because I've disconnected, I've had meetings. By the time I come back, back to my desk and I want to plug the database will be disconnected with this one because I have some security measures in place. So it's pretty much back now. So now everything I've been doing is still the same. Select all from now. I can say. Actually, I think I've got my own area there. I've got, let me see if I've got some tables here. So I created a table some time ago, but I haven't got anything inside. Okay, but I'll select from a bigger table. Now, that's the table I've created. That's the structure of the table. That's not what I need. Select all from. Uh, that's a table name. Don't worry about it. I'm going to use a shortcut to run it. So that's the result. So I'm selecting all from the table. It's got loads of data. It's got all that. Let me just pick something. Let me pick that value. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to filter it by that and say where skill equals I'll paste it there and I'll run that. It reduces my, it's going to reduce now my value. So whatever number of rows I add initially is filtered and everything you're going to see here. It's going to add that skill. I can say that, and I can say, and same thing will be done. I can filter by something else to say, and transaction equals that. Let's just say, and trans. Don't forget, you need that because I'll paste it there and I'll just run it. Now I'm filtering it down a little bit. So let's see if it has any data for that transaction. Now it has just one line, just one line for the transaction. So I'm going to take that out, select that, run the talk to again. Um, okay, so let's pick another value. I want to filter it. 
that's something more. Okay, simple. Okay, where that is that, and I'll do something. And PS dates. Yeah, let's filter by the dates. PS underscore dates. Yeah. Let's see. Greater than C state. Okay, there's, there's a function we always use there when we want to do that. I want to truncate. I'll say trunk. Don't worry, it's not. I'll truncate. Truncate means you want to sort of limit it to that bit. Truncate PS date. Yeah. Greater than trunk. C state is today's date, system date. Yeah. C date minus five. So I'm going to look back. What I'm saying here is. Please give me everything on the data that asks this value for that column, but also limit the date to where the date here, any date, the PSD is a column. So the data just for the last five days from today. Look at system date and take five days away from it. So I need data in the last five days. That's simply what I'm saying. So there's nothing in the last five days. Let's start increasing that. Let's give you some more values and see if it's right. So I'm looking for table that adds data. One minute. It's not my fault, it's just that because, okay, yeah, now we've got data in the last 30 days, fine. So now what we're doing there is we're looking for that same value, but where the date, so we just now, again, all this depends on the report you're building. Now I'm trying to build a report, but I'm trying to sort of, I mean, have some insight into the data based on the requirement and my knowledge of simple SQL to query. Now, someone is going to point to the right director to tell me, go to that table, that is where the data is. But I can write simple query to fetch data out. It's crucial for data analysts, please. Now, some people think that they will give you the data in the spreadsheet. Why do you, why would you wait for them to give you data? I have that skill as well, so you could query a data to fetch out your data yourself. Then you could, now, that's a tenable skill. Anybody can work on spreadsheets. Someone can develop a SQL a spreadsheet skill within the, I mean, within the various, uh, this, um, uh, this period of time. In fact, some people in the office know SQL, they know spreadsheet more than I do. That's the, some people have been working for the past 30 years on spreadsheets. You can't know it more than them. Which kind of data analysis are you? You can't know, they know it in and out. In fact, some macros they will write, you'll be surprised at what they've done with, uh, within Excel. They've done a lot in Excel that you can't do it more than that. But what you use to up your game is a little thing like this and getting used to some BI tools, how to plug your data. The source data is the database. Whatever thing they give you is spreadsheet. It's not your source. Your source is the database. So you need to understand how to retrieve data out of the source. And that's just the basic thing we're going about it. So I could say this and I'll say again, let's now order by, now, I'll tell you what I'm going to order by. So I've selected all, I'm going to order by one. And I'll tell you why. Let me delete that one. I'll stay in there. And I'll use my control and enter on my laptop. That's a, that's a, that's a shortcut really. Control, enter. We'll do the same thing around with it. Now, what I've done is I've ordered it based on the information I've provided. It's ordered it in ascending order. Order by one means order by, I didn't have to put, I don't have to put the column name. I just put one, that's column number one. Order by one. And I could say order by one, comma two. Now follow, when you order column one, then order column two as well, that's it. So it, it may take a little bit longer to run, but, now, but it's going to fall. Again, it's order the number based on the date. The date will affect the number. So don't get me wrong, because if you say 2,1, it's going to be different. You see the difference now? 2,1 means it orders by 2 first before it will order by 1. Then you see that the number will start from the lower, the lower number. Then the date will be, it won't be the right order. So it looks at the, the column 2 first before 1. So I want 1 column 2. Uh, in place of that, I could do it normally. I could say order by PS dates. That's PS underscore 
date. Let's leave the comma. We use comma to separate values. If even when you're selecting, I'll quickly show you that, then I'll move on to something else. Um, okay, fine. So, right. So, the same thing I've done with order by one is the same thing as this. Order by one and two is just that, like that, and here's time. Okay, from to enter my keyboard, it will do the same thing for me. Okay, that's it's the same. And if I say this and that, it just does the same. Anyway, so um, that's that. Uh, one more thing we're going to do is I don't need to select or it will select exactly what you need. I need the PS date. From my from my PS time, from my need is skill. So the values you need in your report, you could pick it up. On all the columns here, what do they need to see? They want to see the skill, they want to see the date, the, the date, the, the, the product was sold, the time the product was sold, the skill, that's the unique number of the product, the product ID, that the um the product ID um, for the for the product, what section? I'll choose a section. Section means what type of product was sold. And I'll put what, what quantity uh, section on the store QTY, the quantity as it spells on that. Then move on to cost value. Let's pick the cost value and put that thing to me. I'll pick the backhoe and I'll pick the cost value, something like that. So, comma, backhoe, comma. Value. From now in SQL, please learn to indent. Like, well, that's that's something for another time anyway. But don't put your query on the same line like that. Select this from that, start up on a new line. It makes your query arrange. So it understands it. Even when you're reading it yourself, you can understand it. And when people are reading what you've done, your query, if someone that understands SQL can and wants to read your query as well, they can understand it line by line. So now what I've done now is the same thing we've been doing before. But I'm just limiting the columns. So instead of having everything, the okay, cost value is wrong then. So it's probably written differently. Let me comment that out. So that's a comment. I don't need a comma there. So when you comment out, just double arrows, it won't consider that. That's taken out of it. It's not part of the query for now. That's what it means. Um, okay, I want to see what that cost value is. So I can quickly go back to my Previous query, let me see. I can quickly, yeah, you can double click, you can see the history here, the query history is somewhere here. That's where it's highlighted. Your query, all my previous query history is there. If I want to pick anything I've run, I mean, I've sort of I've done before, I can easily just look for it there and double click. I don't need to rewrite basically if it's recently. So I just want to run all, but that column name is wrong. Select all cost value. Am I missing it? Oh, cost valve. That's what is wrong there. Right. I've seen that. So it's actually called valve. Okay. So I can remove the comments. Then return the comma there. Then put the anywhere you put the cost of your, your mouse there, it will, it will it's going to recognize the whole statement because there is a semicolon. Even if I put it on a click on one, it highlights that area. So now that's a simple report from my own concept. It's a simple report. You can use that tool to figure out your report. That's the one you need. You're selecting your field tree, you're putting some aggregation. I'll do something for you now. I'll put another field, but it's going to tell me to do something. And from there, we jump on to extracting this to spreadsheet, or I have another one actually, and work on that. So now we we'll put the value. I'll now put some analytical function. I'll now say sum of the cost value. Well, you see what it's going to tell me. Yeah, that is where your reports begin to make sense. Yeah, as a data analyst, it's not just retrieving data, but you now know some algorithm. I could look for some, I could look for the average, I could look for the, the max, the maximum um, sold product, which one was sold most. There's max. I, I mean, let's let's just look for this first. So, we want to look for the cost value, but don't miss an error. Back. An error is going to come up because when you aggregate product, you need to be grouped. So we have to group it. There's going to be grouped by all this before the sum. You understand that. Don't think too deep that it's too complex. It's not complex. It's when you practice things, I will have to put a group because the thing is that so I have product one, two, three, four. Each one has different costs. Yeah. So product one is sold for 10 pounds, that's for 20 pounds, that's for 30 pounds, that's for 40 pounds. Now I want to 
put in a new product to sum the product up by what? How are you summing by? You can't just sum one line. You have to sum by something. So I want to sum by the product type or by something. So that's why you have to group by what group are you summing up? That's how it works. It's mathematical. If you think of it, um, I mean, in depth, you know it's mathematical. So when you're summing or you are doing, you're doing some calculations, so analytical functions in your SQL, SQL is going to ask you to group by because the thing is, it's not doing some mathematical functions. It's doing some mathematics for you. It needs to know what am I adding it together? Am I adding based on color? Do you want to add all the ones that ask for the red and separate them from the one that ask for the green? Doesn't make sense. So you could group by color. You could group by size. You could group by the material. You could group by the product ID. So it's going to ask you to group by something. Now I want to group by everything. I believe I copied that. So I'm grouping by again when I'm grouping by. I tell you, I indent my query. Tap, tap, tap. The reason it becomes more meaningful when someone is reading it. I like reading it like that. So when I read the tab, the pause and lines. So that's why your query looks like a long one, but it's readable. That's what makes it good. So now, in fact, the best way I write my query is this. I'll tell you, I'm tabbing like that. But I want to, I want to specify, I want to just see each line because the thing is, it's not like a report you're writing. You want to distinct distinctly identify each one. I want to get the date, the time, the skill, the section, the quantity, the barcode, the cost value, and the sum of the cost value. Now, I'm grouping by everything before that sum. You can't group by sum. So every other thing on top of the sum, you group by all other parameters before the real aggregation, then run it. And let's see what happens. Then it does it for me. It does it. Now, but because each one has quantity one, now anyone that has more than one quantity, now, this data we have has only one quantity. If not, you will have been able to see the one that asks you. If I look at the old data and I get the one that asks you, what you're going to see here is that multiplied by quantity will give you that value. That's what is happening. That's the analytical function there. Now, let's do something. Um, if I check the, let's see, max. It's probably going to be the same as everything. I'm finding maximum cost value. Yeah, they probably be all the same because they all have one quantity basically. All right, so it's expecting. Sorry, there's a comma there because I have two values. They have to be separated by comma. I hope that's the issue. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like I said, queries in SQL. When you run it, it gives you, it gives you some errors, but you'll be like, oh, what's happened? Now you begin to look, maybe a single full stop somewhere, but if you're not conversant, they can give you a day for a whole day. I've seen people that be like, Joe, I've been running this thing, it's not running. And I'll be on there, I'll be like, oh, you should have a comma there, that's it, a comma. A comma, but you've been thinking for 10 hours or four hours, yeah? So anyway, you can see the ads, the max as well is 0.74 because that's what it is anyway, because of the data we're getting. Anyway, so I'm gonna take those out. Uh, we just want to simplify things a little bit. I'll remove that comma there in particular. And again, I don't need the group ID. The moment I remove the analytical functions, I don't need the group ID. So I run that. Then I can then from here right click S4, just right click anywhere within that. Uh, let me cancel. Anywhere in this area within the resolve thing, right click export and export at whatever value, whatever data type. You want to export a CSV, a HTML, anything. But I want to do a spreadsheet like Excel X, right? But I want to give it a name. So let me call it. Yeah, I just call it. Um, sample, because that's the name I'm going to be looking for. Next is simple. Go. If your data is not too long, you can see somewhere A is running. If your data is not too long, yeah, it's not too much, rather. If you have very simple data, it runs like, like that, it's gone. And I now need to go and look at my, within my system, I know where it will be. I know where it will be. I know where it will be. It will be under my analog for sample. That's the one. Today's date, 9-4, 2046. Double click on it. When you double click on it now, that is what 
That's the data we've been extracting since. The same thing, we go around. So some people, this is their starting point. They give them spreadsheets. Yeah. For me, tell me what you need. Yeah. According to my SQL skill sets, identify the table, fetch out the report for you anyway. So now what I now do is this. Yeah. I'll first send you this spreadsheet. Does it make sense to you? I'll put all the functions where the marks, the list add, the, the, the variance, put all the functions in SQL, send you the spreadsheet. To the, consider it like I've got my requirement and I'm now sending it forward for a sign up for a review. So I'll tell you, oh, that is what I found out based on what you need. These are the sales for that period you requested. These are the products. Does that make sense to you? Or you now go to like, hey, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Joe, yeah, but I need it in a fanciful form. Now, a report will come like this. But the thing is, for this show, because they need to see reports in a better form. And that is why this is a starting point for some people that some people's data source is, X, is, a, is a spreadsheet. They now plug the spreadsheet to a BI tool to build a fanciful dashboard. Now, for me, I'll create my report for you in that SQL first. In fact, I can plug in my database to what I call the Oracle. Oracle developer. I'm going to open that for that discover. It's another BI tool. I'll open that for you at some point for you to see. So you see how we create reports uh, on such platforms. So anyway, before I go there, let me continue with what I, I was actually doing before. So now, so we've extracted the spreadsheet. It looks like this. Now we can turn the spreadsheet into quite a lot of things. A lot of things. Now, one of the basic, basic that anybody can do, well, I don't know, but I think anybody can do is the, is the pivot table, basically. So you, within the Excel, that's the beginning of your, you can do a lot of things. You can slice data, you can um, sort of um, um, filter the data, you can claim the data, you can polish it, present it in a nice form in all the sort of pie chart, bar chart that makes sense to the business based on what you need. Excel is starting point, but it's a very good tool that does a lot of data analysis. But before you do analysis, you can start with data. Now, let's say now, uh, let, let, let's parameter you've been just given, you've just been given this pressure. You didn't extract the data yourself. Now, the first step you take as a data analyst is what we call data cleansing. You have to clean your data. You don't wash it, not like you're washing your hand every 20 minutes. You don't wash it in the uh, in the washing machine. But you have to clean data. A clean the data integrity is crucial. It's very crucial in any organization or for anybody. Now, what do I mean by cleaning data? Cleaning data means the data format, the data type, the, the actual values look the same. Um, all the right, that's cool. Let me Okay, that's fine. So all the uh, now, so what, one of the things you look at for in the, in the data cleansing before you start plugging it and start creating some report. Now, when I get a data like this, I want to make sure the data is right. There's no space between any row. There's no empty column anywhere. All the data have the right of data that you have because you'll be surprised. Some database have wrong data. Yeah. So some people will have instead of dates, you will see some. Not everybody is fantastic. No organization clean. It keeps a very good data. I've been in even big organization that look at their data. Oh my God, you feel like, oh my God, I have been doing it because the database was set up wrongly. So you can accept anything. You know, remember I mentioned the other time, data type. So for example, you're setting up a data. Now I'll quickly show us that after you find more. When you're setting up a data, now there's a data dictionary I can use to examine data first. I'll examine the data, I'll see the structure it looks like. If you don't set this column right, so only accept dates. Yeah, for any date column, the data type is date. So if you're trying to put one, two, three there, you say no. The data will require back an error to say no. There is the, the, the wrong data format. They will give you an error. So when I'm creating a table, I'm creating a structure. When I'm working on the day on the project, I'm creating a structure for the guys that will create the table. I don't create the table, but I have the knowledge. So I'll create for you a structure that I wanted to create this table and I would spell it out for you, the data type that you should have. So that when we are putting data into the table, PMs, BAs, you need it. Trust me, you need that knowledge. You may not know in detail, but you need it. So we're going to work with you on that. You don't have to be a novice. You don't have to be, I mean, have to be ignorant in every area. You need to be knowledge, to have the knowledge in all those aspects. So anyway, so reason why you have to look for uh, anomalities and uh, in data, you have to clean up the data is because database may not be set up right. So you may have within this date, you may have 0.74 there. You can never tell. Now, this is a very small data. If I have 
tools of like rules, those of rules, it might take me ages. And that's part of the job of a data analyst. You have to clean the data. You want to present something meaningful to the business. If your data is not clean, now whatever you're doing after is the wrong information you're passing across. It has to be clean first. Now, now what I mean by digital channel, I'll quickly flip back to that so because I might not really want to go back there. Is you're going to see my the same table we've been looking at before. If I really want to uh, sort of check the structure of the data, data dictionary, let's say well, there, there, there is uh, there is another query, there's another language rather that we call describe is describe. So I have to say describe. Yeah. Don't mind the name. Like I said, there are some table names, they don't make sense from now to tomorrow. You ask questions, how did you come about that name? They tell you, yeah, someone just did it. <laughs> you have to have, so if they don't tell you what that table owns, you've been looking forever. But they need to tell you that table, oh, that's the data. Now, this is what I mean by data dictionary. So when the table was created, this is the structure that was put in place. And that's what I mean by the data model. I do it in the spreadsheet or in the Word document. Like a table, put a table in your Word document with four columns, data field, data type, data size, null label. Data field, first name, data type, voucher two. Yeah, it's a variable character. It, it, it could be a name, it could be a number. The reason is, don't consider just your name. Some countries, their name is funny. It has some special characters. Now, you don't want to create a database being um, a racist or being sentimental. Create a database that works for all. So name has to be variable characters. It takes any name any name if your name starts with like an alphabet like that it takes it right last name Bracha. now data size for a name you have to think oh what data okay what's the longest name we can have oh, yeah the first name shouldn't be more than 50 characters that's the size but well, i'll tell you up to 50 characters so data field is the name data type is the Bracha. data size is 50 characters and is it can it be empty yes it can be empty now for employee id primary ids must not be empty any data so which what it means is I could create a table with empty columns. But if you want to create a table that that column cannot be empty. So it's, it's impossible for you to have a name without an ID. That's what we're saying. But you can have an ID without a last name. I don't care. Now you can have an ID without a phone number. But as long as I know your ID, your first name, your last name, you don't have a phone number, it doesn't matter. So phone number can be null. It can be null. But your primary ID, which is your employee ID, your national insurance must not be empty. That's what we mean by knowledgeable. Anyway, so for every table, I can check it to see if it's right first. So sometimes I want to create a data model and I'll be like, okay, for well, that till is a number. So till is a, again, it's an insight into data. And for project manager for BA, sometimes you're working on projects that are related to some table. To get insight into it, this is an area I say, okay, okay. Because you'll be like, what's a till? What does that mean? Well, when I go, I'll be like, oh, till is actually a number. Okay, must it be the maybe the till number? Okay, till one, till two, fine. So it's like an insight anyway. So let's move on. We're having a break in five minutes. So I'll quickly do that. So we're going to pivot insert pivot table. I'll be quick about that. First thing is if you select an area, any area within your text field, let's consider. So if I select anything outside, yeah, outside now, uh, I wait for your screen to load up. I've selected outside, insert pivot table. Now it's telling me to define the table range. I wait for it to load up on your page. You can see that table range is not going to show there. So you have to then go here, yeah, and do that. Select the range, then it fills it in. Yeah. Make sense? Then it's there. Because we didn't select inside. Now, but naturally, select anywhere within this data set. Select anywhere and click on that. It automatically picks that range for you. So it picks the range, except if you're not picking all the ranges, then you could then still go back and select the one you want yourself. That's all I want. So I just saying I need from A1, A, um, what do you call it? The A1 to F7. That's all I need. Yeah. So I'm going to cancel that, cancel this. So we're going back to where we started. Select anywhere and say, pivot to the rule. It picks that. It then it asks you where do you want. To create a pivot. Do you need to create it in an existing existing worksheet or in the new web worksheet? Most times you want to create a pivot table as a separate worksheet, not on this data set and not an existing one. If you an existing, choose existing, and we're going to ask you for the location where the existing file is. But most likely it's going to be a new one. Okay, 
that it changes the dough, it creates a new worksheet. I'm going to go through it again. Uh, we're going to see sheet one on this left hand side. Now it's different from the data set, which is your source. Now this is a data source. Now consider the first spreadsheet as a data source. Now to me, my data source is actually a database where I'm coming from. Now for some people, this spreadsheet is their data source. Yeah. Now I want to start creating some reports based on this. Now what you notice is this is a pivot area and this is the data field area. Every field within the data was selected is here. And these are the areas you need to work on. This is where you manipulate what goes on the role, what's the value, what's the column, you need any filter. That is your working area to create whatever will come in. You're selecting here, working on it here, to create something here. Then you now find see it within the space. Okay? Now, if you select outside this region, you're going to lose that value. Yeah. Yeah. Your pivot is gone because that's the pivot. That's what this, that's what defines it. Select inside, it comes back. Okay. Okay. Quickly, two minutes before we go on break. If you have any question on uh, during the break time, drop it to the question area and I'm going to respond to you then. So now quickly, you want to quickly do something. So I need to find, I need to know all the okay. I'm not picking the skill. If you pick something here, for example, so if I pick that and I don't need it, just move it outside. You see that X. You see the X? Yeah, it deletes. It just takes it out. Anyway, but I've taken a mistake in it. So what I want to do is section, for example, on the roll. I want to have a section. If it makes sense, uh, we're picking just one skill. Well, let's take a section. I want to pick something that makes sense. Maybe backcode has some values. A single backcode as well. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll pick a different data actually to do this. After a break, I'm going to pick a different data that has multiple stuff, uh, multiple record that doesn't just have one line. Yeah. I'll pick a different data. I have some data. I'll pick it up to do a, a pivot table and we'll see how it quickly. I'll just quickly take us through that and then we'll move on from there. Go back to our, our slide, go to some theoretical concepts, ask some questions, then we'll come back look at some BI tools uh, after that. Uh, does that make sense? Okay. I'll see you in another five, six minutes, guys. Take some time to you know, absorb um, um, sort of um, everything I've been saying. If it makes sense, any question, please drop your question within the question area. Um, yeah, I'll answer all these questions now. Drop your question within the question area. If you need to go in depth into understanding data, I don't want to bore some people. So I'm just touching it, just on the peripheral, basically. But these are key things you need to understand. But if you are interested, I'd be more than happy to take you through. Again, nobody was born with it. That's the truth. You have to, uh, uh, you, ha you have to have, you have to be, uh, to, to just be um, that kind of person that you want to know it. Yeah, the zeal has to be there. And, and then uh, I, can, I can guarantee I will trust me as well to support you in that. All right, five to six, seven minutes. Uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Thank you.
Okay, you're welcome back, everyone. Um, I've been trying to answer some questions, and uh, I think I'll just I'll do I'll do the rest like uh, sort of regularly. I won't really yeah I won't type it uh, before we move on. I can understand somebody said like uh, it's a lot to take in. Absolutely. Now, but in this my small head, everything is there. Trust me. If I can do it, anybody can. We don't need to be an expert in everything. Concentrate in an area, but it depends on what kind of person you have. You could gradually begin to put things in. I started as an SQL database administrator. Yeah, I moved in from being an engineer. Yeah, now because I thought at that point, you know, um, I mean, a few people, I thought a couple of people or more than they, they know me. They know me like they know me way back. When I mean way back, when I was even at the uni, I have people that knows me like as far back as them on this platform. Now, I, now the thing is, then I now thought like I was thinking I could do better. Then I became a DBA on the SQL platform because I was working on database, writing SQL, managing database. But it didn't take long before I discovered like, you know what, I could do better again. I could actually come from it. Uh, what interested me then was the DBA job. I was doing more of DBA job even than most of the DBA. I said DBA, business analyst job. I was doing a DBA job, but I was doing more of BA jobs, more than even the BAs. Then I moved over to be a BA. So, but my SQL skill set has been useful ever since. Ever since. So someone asked uh, a project control person, um, does DA, data analysis of business intelligence, analysis is it relevant to a project planning or control practitioner um well not essentially if you're not a data analyst like i always say now you're not a now am i a data analyst on a daily basis no but i'll tell you what i do daily i analyze data i like it or not i work with bi team as a bi analyst now i build dashboard i'll show you in this program a lot of reports i build here yeah? i build report i'm a business analyst and i build reports for over four thousand staffs the report they depend on now, just one aspect of my business, of where I work, that's what I mean, just one aspect, not everything. But I work as a global person for every other person to sort of act deep into the data because of the SQLC. As a BA, I do that. I check into the data. So I'm working on projects and they need a data sort of report. I take it upon myself, interrogate the data, and I fetch out data gaps. And that's one of the sellable skill sets I've been able to show people. Now, I, I will query data just to select all and that, and I will take my time to study the data. And I'll be like, what do we need? And I'll be like, well, wait a minute, I've looked into that table. What you need is not there. What's, what is happening? Oh, it should be there. Why? Sales should have it. Then I'll go over to the guys that are sending data to data warehouse. Guys, we're looking for this, but I've checked the table. I can't see the data there. And of course, and I'll create a kind of extra work for them. Not a commotion. No, you're not really. But I'm doing the writing. But I'm pointing them right. Some of them, they don't even know that the data has been missing. This time it's failed sometimes. It's not been updated. Oh, they be like, oh, Joe, thank you very much. We haven't noticed. The update, the daily back, is actually stopped in the last three weeks. We didn't know. But because I interrogate the data regularly, I help them to identify the data gaps. And that's one of the key things the BI, the core BI team for the group, they like me for that. I work hand in hand with them. I'm, I have solved their problem. When I give them, create this report, do the dashboard for this report, they're sorted. Why? They know what I've asked them to do. I've checked the data, I've cleansed the data. There's absolutely data integrity in what they're doing. And it's the quality of your work and how much trust you can build in people. Now, for project managers, if you just do all you can do is just the data knowledge. You can never tell what sort of project you're going to plan or control. You can never tell. Because project managers, it's not like, except if your project is only in one sector. If you're a project manager in NHS and you're not, you don't plan to leave NHS, fine. Just all the knowledge you want to have is, so in this context, then the concept now. All the knowledge you're building is in the industry of NHS, and all your domains will be healthcare related domains. Fine, but I'll ask you to challenge yourself. You could be the program manager for the biggest company in the whole of UK or wherever, US, Canada, wherever you are tomorrow. So always aspire for that one. So, what do you need to get there? Grab as many knowledge, as much skill set as you can. It doesn't hurt. If you can't learn it, then leave it. But why not try it? And don't go too much in depth. That's the truth. Don't go too much in it. You don't need it. It's not everybody that can grab it. But what I need you to grab is understand how data, what a database is, what data format looks like, and understand, select all from the table name. Simple. Please do that. Do that for me. Select all from this table where whatever condition you want to put, you can filter and order by. If that's all you want to know, just grab that. Copy somewhere. So anytime you need the copy and paste, just change the table name. 
change the column name. That's all. We we recycle code. I'm gonna show you a lot anyway. So let me answer another one before we move on. I've done that. Please can you send your contact? I've said that. I'm gonna give everyone my contact detail right after this session. It's actually on the slide. I'll give it to you definitely. When on SQL environment, what key did what key do you did you eat to display the list of tables? List of tables. I want to understand that. I'll quickly go back there. I don't seem to get that. What do you mean list of tables? Uh, show me, uh, my screen is there. Uh, if you want to talk, uh, Madhika, so that I can actually understand exactly what you're saying before I move on. I want to make sure I answer that, sorry. Uh, let me see. If you want to, I can unmute you. Uh, you're muted if you want to. I just want to understand exactly what's going to answer that move on. So, oh, yes. Uh, just uh, if you look at the line 13 on the upper pane, uh, the top part of the screen, line 10. Right. Yeah, you can see if you go to where you have the, uh, where you have the, uh, the query, select this and that. Yeah, there, correct. 13 there. Uh, so sometime uh, there's something you would do that would display some oh, bluish right. gray okay. list. Okay. I get what you're saying now. Okay, so what I eat is this. So either two things I do, I'll show you. Can you see that on my screen? Yeah. What 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 can you see? So I can run the query just simply pressing that. Yeah. It gives me the results. So it gives me the, the structure. That's the table structure. So let me and erase that so that we don't have any other thing there. So I can select anywhere within this query, eat that button. That's the run button. On the Microsoft platform, it's called execute. So run, this is Oracle. This is an Oracle platform where the biggest company in the world, this is what they use. Any company you're going to work, if it's a big company like banks and all the rest, they use Oracle because it's more secure. A lot of them use Microsoft as well. Some of them actually have a combination of both Microsoft and Oracle. So they all work the same, but one is just trusted one than the other. So anyway, so when you eat run on, my, on Oracle platform or you execute on the um, Microsoft, it runs that query for you and it gives you the result. It's a structure of the table. The column, and the data type, that's the describe. You're describing it, it's like a data dictionary. It's like you're saying, what does this table mean? Or what are the content of the table? What's the structure, the underlying structure of the table? That is how it was defined. So we they define the column name, that's a data field called PS date, it's a date. PS time is a number. Item is a number. Section is a varchar two, that's a data type in Oracle and in Microsoft as well, or n varchar, no maybe um, char or n varchar. Numerous variable character. Vacha is just variable character. Variable character means whatever you type in there, it accepts. Not just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. If you type A, B, 1, 2, column, dash, I think it accepts. It's a variable. It accepts any character. If you type in a, a Japanese name, there, it accepts it. A Chinese name, it Arabic name, it accepts. Because it's a variable character. Now, it's different from the number type. If number type, you type A, B, C, it will fire back. No, sorry. I'm expecting a number. Now, so for a trans, for till, for p time, is respecting a number. That's the database structure. And that's when we're creating a database. If you're interested fully, I mean, I'll teach you all that. I mean, absolutely. I love that area. So it's it's not issue. So now the key I press is what you see here. Now, I won't I don't want to tell you, I want to see yourself. So that now what can you see there? Run statements in brackets, control something, control plus enter. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah, that's why it's so it's a shortcut for running queries yeah. in Oracle. So yeah. if you want to run a query, you have the, the run button or you press save simultaneously, control enter on your keyboard. It's a shortcut. So and I believe that's the question you're asking, right? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. So it's a shortcut. I either press run or I press control enter on my keyboard. It does the same. Thank you for that. All right. So let's move on a little bit. Except for another person, someone is asked a question. I believe I've done that. I don't want to bust our brains. I don't want to say too much. The blue list that appears from the top. Okay, you've just said that. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's move on uh, where we stopped. So I was saying I was going to pull another table actually. So let me pull test two. Um, test two is something similar. I've done that. Okay, I've actually, I'm going to delete all this. So let me take that off. Delete. 
So now, test two is a data. I can show you the query for that. You can see the SQL. I run the query to select some data from the database. And that's the beauty of all this. So I've written this query, and the queries come back to give me this data. That's a data source in the example. So I've cleansed the data. I've checked there are no sort of anomaly. All the data fields are right. There's no gap where they should be. All these are days. They, write, they look right. So I've now gone to say select anywhere, insert pivot table. That's all the stuff. It's defining the boundary for me, the range. I want to set a new worksheet and say OK. And then the pivot table, I've got all that. So I want to start setting my data now. I want to start setting my report basically based on how you want it to look, how the requirements is now. Data analysts, business analysts, project managers, BI analysts will capture requirements. You can't just build a report based on what you think. You build a report or you analyze data based on the requirement. When I say requirements, what they need. Someone wants to see the sales data. Yeah. How many products were sold or the most sold products in the last quarter, for example. That's a requirement. So you have some parameters that guides what you're supposed to deliver. So you just don't go and just pull data randomly. You're pulling data related to products, to sales of products, and you want to know the maximum, the one that was, I mean, the most, um, I, I mean, the most, the most sold or whatever products and the time. So there's a parameter that guides what you're doing. You're guiding by, and those are the things I'm filtering by. So I'm going to the right table and putting the cross based on the requirements. So they want to know product name. Now, one of the questions I ask is, what do you want to see? So I will show some people, oh, I want to see some data. Now, I need to go back to you. I will write a query, select everything, but I will now tell the requester. Now, the requester will now tell you, like, you know what? I'll tell, what do you want to see? Do you want to see all these data fields, or there are some of them that don't make sense to you? They don't really make any, not really, they don't make sense, but you don't need them in this report. And, oh, yeah, I need to see the, the product name, the skill. I want to see how many quantity, what quantity was sold, where it was sold to, who was sold to, what was the cost oh, price, the selling price. Hello? Hello, I can hear someone talking to you. Please mute yourself. Thank you. So, so I need to see all, I need to get all that parameter because that's what defines the report. So, now, what I'm saying is when I have everything in the SQL, it doesn't mean I need everything in this field. Now, maybe all I want to see is the size. Yeah, I want to see the sizes and the quantity that was bought for size. You can see that it already starts making a little of sense. And I want to see the commodity code for each one of them. And I want to see the cost price for that, for example. Yeah, let's just let's stop there for now. So yeah, you know, someone is okay, let me check who it is. Okay, all right. So um, yeah, so um, like I said, maybe that's all we need. So we, we, that's the beginning of whatever data uh, we're, we're trying to. Let me quickly go back there so that we know that's the. I mean, I can just that's not really what I need. So now the next thing you want to look into now is we've got some basic. Let's click on that so that we have a pivot area. So uh, the next thing you want to think of is does it look like what you're looking for? Is it the way you want it? You want to now begin to format the data. That's the price. It doesn't look like price to me. It doesn't look like it just looks like number. So you click on that. You want to start formatting the data. Right click. Yeah. You go to the value field. You want to format the number. I wait for that to load up. So all I've done is I right click on the value. Right click anywhere. Let me go back. Right click within the column you want to format. Right click. Then you select value field setting. Then you could do a lot of aggregation there. We're going to come back to that later. Yeah. But now I want to format the number. And that is a currency. Whatever currency you want, select it there. That's what I want. If you want it in two decimal places or something, I'll leave it like that. And I click OK. Then no okay that. Then it's formatted. Now it looks like a currency now. Now it looks like currency. Though. So that, that's the process. So I will format it. And again, we could do more. We could do more actually. I want to see the uh, the most sold first, the highest. Level we could sort, yeah. Look at it the same one. I want to see the highest on top. We could sort by largest to smallest. 
click on that so it arranges that when it arranges that it affects the commodity code quantity up to that point it does that and so that's how you do everything you want to do like you look across your data you now you place the data you want to now start creating reports you want to polish it up you want to do what we call like analysis that's the real analysis your formatting, sorting, like the way we do, you are arranging, you're filtering. We've done the filtering, which we're doing where plus, where this is this. That's all I was doing. I've only selected what I need. I will select all the fields. Yeah. Now, then I do the, I've done where this is this and that and this and that. Then I say order by, I'm ordering as in descending order now. Now, I can do in SQL, I can do in Excel, I can do in OBIE, I can do in Discoverer, I can do in any platform, power BI, anything. All I need is the data source. Then if you give me where the data is, I can use SQL or any tool to generate what you need. The only thing SQL won't give you is the graphical uh, representation, which we're going into in a minute. So anyway, so you format that. If everything looks okay, that's a number. Yeah, if it's a number, if you want to count, you can go by again, value fit 13, and if you do that yeah, result, well. or, sorry, you can do that at general. Or just number. If it's a number that has decimal places, put it there. I could put it a number, but zero decimal place and zero that. Okay, okay. So it still remains the same because it hasn't got any decimal. Basically. So once you've done that, and then, let me just quickly uh, sort of step up a little bit. So uh, the next thing I want to quickly go into now is go into your pivot area. And uh, put it out there. Then you want to. Sorry, I need to move this one. Okay. So you want to go there. Pivot table and like depending on what version or uh, of um, or, or, or Excel you're using, your presentation on the screen, the ribbon area might not really be the same as mine. But you're going to have the pivot table analysis area, or, or you just have analyze. Sometimes some Excel apps just analyze on top of them. Instead of it, you're within pivot already, you just have analyze. All you're looking out for is the pivot charts. So you could present it in any form you want a bar chart. The pie charts, any how we want to present the data, and there's a lot we can still do that. Let's just keep this one and say, okay, we want the bar chart representation of pop up. Let's see. If I just that, I'll do something. I don't need this actually. I'm going to hide all these fields because it's not, it doesn't look like exactly what I want to see. And I can delete that as well. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, I want to see that because I'm eating all that. So you can select each one of that and add and add uh, what you need to add is the data level. I want the data level to show on top of it. Now, to be honest, let me see something. I can take commodity code out yeah, and I can add the data level. I just want to know the price for now. So the price for each of them products is displayed there and the quantity. Now, if I don't need the quantity, I can just drop that one as well. Then I just have the price. I want to know. The, the product that was sold and the one that was sold most. So it depends on what you need. Yeah. So now when you've done that, there's a lot of polishing you can still do to it. You can see the price range. I could make this one bigger. Yeah. You could right click on that and you go to. Can you see that on my screen? Yeah. The data series. Now, it gives you another page somewhere here. Let me move something out of the way. Something is obstructing me. Sorry. Right. So it goes to this. You can see the gap width, the gap width. And what you want to do there is the gap between this bar and the next bar may not make it look too nice. So you could increase it. There are two things you could do. Either you increase it or you reduce it. Yeah. So let me close it all up. And that's what happens. But I don't want to close it. I want to make it look nice. Something like that. Depends. Now, this is all about the look and feel of the presentation. We have a standard within the organization. Once I've done that, I can close that pane off. That's gone. And what other thing could you add to it? It all depends. So now the total is not total again. Sorry. Hello. Sorry. That's now it's now um product sales report, something like that.
Apa yang parah? Right, I need someone to pull some meat at it. I'm just speaking. Some people are, if you are not muted, please mute yourself, please. Trying to get all the person needs. Okay. Right. Okay. I try it, try it, that's fine. Okay. Right. So, like I was saying, so it depends on how you want it to look. I could still use the same and go to the same area. Depends on the, the look we want to see. So one will make sense to some people. Uh, one will not. So it depends on pretty much what you want to see. Uh, you can actually let me select that. Okay. Oh, sorry. Right. So I was trying to reduce that. You could make it. Uh, let's make it this way. And bring that beside it. Go like that. Yeah. That's it. So again, the same way, do I need a sum? Do I need a, it's a total? Well, yeah, I can see all these colors to define the size, which is fine. So I could filter based on whatever size I want to filter on, but I don't want to see this, click on that, and just hide it. Hide that, and I want to move this to the top. And I want to call that, say, product sales. Now, I could actually change it. Don't get me wrong. So now instead of calling this product sales, I could tell you is the this is the most. I'm calling just a moment now. So we could we could change this to be the most sold item. I don't have more time again. Now we could have like the general sales record. You could have the least sales record, and you could do another chart for the most sell, uh, the most sold uh, products, basically. And this is how we now the reason for this is your data makes no sense to some people in business. When you see this sort of graphics, so let me do it the way I was doing it before, because then we have more time uh, for those interested with uh, uh, to go a bit in there. There's a lot we can cover under this. There's a lot. We, we have, you know, there's something called pivot app. I don't know if you've heard that before. Pivot app will save you a lot of time. Pivot app will even save you the time to format the data to start changing it to currency because it picks your data directly from the source. It's just the same thing, but the thing is, it's what is an adding. I haven't added it to this. It's an adding you have. You have it on top. You click on, I think the CMS, uh, CM. Um, I remember it now, but you're going to see the, the pay, the, the, the one called the pivot pal under a tab. It's an adding you have. When you select the pivot pal, yeah, pivot pal gives you a table. That allows you to select all this product, but automatically it picks it from the source. So when you're picking the cost price, it's telling you it's in currency straight away. So again, you can add more value. So there's a lot to cover, like I said. And um, for now, uh, I'm just going to show you this then so that we can jump on another tool. Basically, there's a few more I, I need to show you. Uh, just a moment. Right. Save reports, whatever name you want to give it, something like that. So you can create a lot of fancy sort of report just from the data that you get. You see, now Excel is useful when you have a data source. You can have the data source in form of Excel and plug it to another sort of tool. Now, another sort of tool you can get is something that looks like uh, what I'm going to show you briefly again. That's the Power BI. Now, Power BI has some functionalities, yeah? Now, Power BI will allow you to connect to data from different sources. It does the same thing. The same, now, the, the, the way your uh, data analysis and creation works is from the data source. When you get data from the source, the data source, like I said, could be an Excel or it could be like from the data visual extracting data. You cleanse the data, you manipulate the data, you filter it, you um, sort of um, and you filter, put some conditions, put some ordering, and do all those fanciful looks. Then you then move into your full analysis. Then you give it the last stop. How do you want to present it? So a source of every data uh, has to be identified. You need to know where the data is coming from, wherever you want to, whatever tool you want to use. Yeah, your tool must be plugged in against a data source. 
For example, Microsoft's um, SQL Server Analysis Service, that's SSA, that's a, that was the first set of tools I used. I would have loved to show you that again tonight. I've got all of them. And as I said, it was the first tool I used is plug against any tool. You could plug it against any database as well. But basically, it's part of the Microsoft database suit. SQL Server Database Management Studio, which manages data, that's the one I showed you earlier. SQL Server data, um, 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 Analysis Service is for your database analysis. And SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server Integration Service, again, is that tool that does the extraction, transformation, and loading. It's a step before your final analysis. Essential for data migration, if you want to do that work. Now, what we're doing tonight is we're just having a look at Power BI. You can get data from Excel. You can get data from a Power BI data set that you created yourself within from the back end of it. I could pull in data from a SQL Server. That's a Microsoft. So it's just going to ask me if I select that. Now, whatever source I select, it's going to ask me to log into the database. So if I have the database login, just like the database I showed you earlier, the same login I use for that, I'm going to put it here and I will OK. And this tool will connect to that data. Now, I can then begin to write query inside this tool. So now you can see there that it said, do you want to import a table? Do you want to import? Do you, have, do you want an import connectivity or a direct query connectivity? So which means I could plug in against the database and ask you to just import the table, the whole table. Or I could plug it in and say, you know what, I want to select only what I need from that database. So I'll write the same query I've been writing, I've been writing before that I wrote on SQL Developer, select all from JDST, OR, ORPS, log D, where this is the, I'll type it and I'll say run. And this tool will go into that database and pick the data there for me. The same way I did in SQL Developer, but I have to extract to Excel to create that report. As the I will plug into the database, fed the data out in form of a table. It may not look as good or as fanciful as the Excel, but the good thing is Power BI is a Microsoft tool as well. So it's as good as it. And it will do exactly what I did in PowerPoint by just selecting it, how or what format I want to present the data. And I can still filter the data. You can see all the filtering here. You can drill down. You could do a lot of things. Yeah. I could add different colors to different items. I could do, it's just like polishing the data. The most important thing to me is your understanding of what a data is like and how useful a data will be. Now, the good thing for me, the extra skill set that you can have is the ability to query a database. Now, I can teach you these tools easy. Now, provided your data will be provided to you in form of expressions. Easy. A lot of people are coming like that, they don't need to. I mean, but if you need that extra touch, just extra skill set, I will advise just being able to extract data is not too much. So, yeah, so that's one of the two. Um, I can show you a, I'll just show you one more tool, to be honest. And sorry, excuse me. Just allow me to. That's another tool I'm pulling up for you. It's called the Oracle D Discover. It's a BI Discover. You can see there, Oracle has a few tools. I don't know if I can pull the other one. Let me see if I've got it somewhere. So I'll just show you basically a lot of tools uh, you can have. Uh, I don't go it so I'm not very so okay. No worry. Let me show you discover. So discover allows you to create to create some reports. It allows you to create some reports. But not as fanciful as well. Now, do you know what? I'll tell you something. Discoverer itself can get you a job. I've gotten a lot of offers, though I didn't accept. Just to come and now, nah, we need someone that understands Oracle Discoverer. Yeah, a BI person that can create a report. And the easiest tool you can use to create a report is Oracle Discoverer. I'm telling you, it's the easiest of any tool you can use. It requires a little bit of SQL skill set, but again, easily you can create a lot of reports for Discover. I can't tell you how many reports have got created on this platform. I can't begin, I can't just begin to tell you how many that got created. Now, that's my name. All these reports, I don't need to show you. These are all reports under Discover. And it's as easy as Again, the easiest thing with it is you want to create it, give you that platform, you want to a graph, whatever, the table. I don't need to create a graph, I just want to create a table and we go next. 
then he has to pick your data source. Again, everyone has to data source. Pick your data source, you go next, and you begin to just put them with a drag and drop. When I pick my data, so I say I want that, I just drag it there. And it moves it to this side, and I go next. Then it's creating my report. Now it's creating it to form of it. You can see it is giving me all the columns already. Then I go next, then I begin to do a lot of things. A lot of things you could do is I could then, if I finish this now, it runs. Yeah, I could go next, 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 next. I'm not sorting it, I'm not doing anything. It just finish. Discover runs the report and it just pulls the report out for you straight away. But a lot of things, you could now do a lot of things on that. Next. Now, based on what I've selected, so it's going to take some time to run, I've asked it to run. Then it will now begin to add a lot of things to it. It will filter, put some parameter that, okay, I want you to be able to select dates. So if you want to run it from yesterday to today, you just select, I'll put a parameter there for you on your dashboard so that you can select the day you want to run and run and it gives you the data, something like that. If, I don't know if you know what I mean. So these are some of the things uh, I will be very much, I'm going to close that. I will be very much interested to teach anyone that is interested. Now, that's an overview, a big overview of SQL, a big overview of extracting data, a big overview of slicing the data, cleansing the data, creating some um, fanciful dashboard and report, and some of the tools we use, like the Excel, like the Power BI, um, like the, the Discover, the OBIE, I didn't get to show you that, and um, a few more as well um, that I can bring on board the tableau, the, the click view. So, so if you know one, the, the truth of the matter, if you know one, if I show you the other one, the same concept of data source to cleansing data, to analyzing data and creating the dashboard, you could plug it in and just begin to do it. If you can work with Power BI, all you need to know is the how the tableau or click view, how, how is this structure? You will create another report. Easy. Easy. It's like you can write SQL. You can write any SQL on any platform or Naruto or MySQL or, or, or Microsoft. You could do it. It's like you can drive. It, it doesn't matter if you start driving with a Toyota. If I give you like a, a real sport tomorrow, you will drive it. It may take you some time to get accustomed to the, but the thing is, it only takes you minutes. Driving is driving. SQL is SQL on any platform. Anyway, that's it for now on that. Any question? Any question for me? All I've done is, uh, again, everything I should have done on the slide, I've showed you practical wise because I don't want to bore you too much with theories. If you need a theory, I've shown you how to sort, the multiple sorting. The only thing we haven't gone in depth in the SQL because I don't want to bore a lot of people. I should have shown you, I wanted to show you how to join two tables, how to select from the table, and from two tables, where to where the ID links up, the relationship I was talking about. But again, that's for someone that is interested in it. It's for someone that really wants to be, that really wants to go that line. I need you to decide if that's what you want to do. And I mean, get in touch. We're going to go through all these things you're seeing on slide, but I can see it. Uh, uh, a lot of people are actually saying there's a lot to take in. So I have to be uh, conscious of my audience and so to deliver exactly as they. Yeah, yeah, definitely you get you get all the materials. That's all right. Like I said, if I call your email, uh, definitely you get all, all the videos you will all get as well. Like I said, but on the platform now is to hand out. The rest of it I'll get across to you. Right now I'll be able to answer some questions. You've been asking for my detail. That's it on the screen there. Right. Um, like I said, uh, today it's pretty much like an overview. I know it's a bit technical. It's only for people that wants to understand it. Yes. Only if you need that little knowledge, yeah, that little of the that little knowledge just to understand the, the basics of it, fine. I recommend that to be A's and PS. I can introduce it when you are coming fully um, uh, for the program. I can introduce that there. I can introduce us to just like uh, of course you have to know how to use Excel. That's going to be introduced. It's pretty much part of every package. It's pretty much part of it. You have to know basic Excel or inter at, at least at an intermediate level. Uh, or basic, whatever, whatever one you're able to take, you'll be able to do that. As I detail on there, it's also on the flyer. You can get in touch with me. For people uh, all the way from Nigeria, uh, all thanks to you guys, uh, to my very able partner and friend, uh, well, long time friend, or to could I see, uh, well done, guys. Please, uh, please, I really, really appreciate you. Please, 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 let me thank you. So you've really done uh, a great job. You've really done a great job. You've really done a great job. I really appreciate everyone, of course. From the United Kingdom, from Canada, from the United States, uh, and from wherever maybe I've, I've not been able to pick uh, out of those uh, um, four areas of those three continents. Uh, uh, if you are from there as well, you're really much, you're very much appreciated as well. 
Thank you. So what it is, is that's my detail. Now I deal with business analysis, B-I-B-A, B-A-P-M, whichever one you want, or simply B-A. So you could either be a business analyst, or you want to be a data analyst, or you want to be a project manager. Now you don't have to be just B-A. You could be a process analyst. There are a lot of rules related to that. And that's the thing. You don't need all the knowledge. You don't need to know all the skill set. You don't need to know all the techniques. If you now, if I know where you are now, if I can get you wherever you are now, I can tell you based on where your strength lies, what the I mean, the immediate thing you need to take on board that will easily land you the job. And that's what I want to say. I'll do some assessment. And that's why I always say get into get into. Except if you know what you know and you're very adamant that this is what I want. Again, let's talk. I can advise you. Because the thing is, I, I, I can give you a lot, but I need to know where you have so that I know, okay, I advise you based on it, my little experience to say, well, I bought a job available in this area. If I can know this, I can land with that job. I bought a job offer today uh, for some way, an agile business analyst starting two weeks, very urgent. I couldn't take it. I got two already in my hands. I can't take any other one. And I was telling someone this morning, I was like, oh, you know what? Someone called me up for the platform. I was like, oh, if people meet up with you, fine, I'll recommend. I have people that I can recommend. But the thing again, I need to know where you are. I need to know. So, like I said, you can be a BA, a PM, a data analyst, yeah, alone. It could be a project support, a PMO analyst, it could be a process analyst, just with a subset of BA skill set, it could be a process system, a system process analyst, it could be a, a technical business analyst, it could be that technical, just be a business analyst on the business side. It could be uh, a project manager, a project support, a, a, a project coordinator. Uh, you could be a data analyst, uh, you could be uh, you could be a junior data analyst. I've got a lot of roles that come like that. And before you move on to be a BI, business intelligence analyst, or you could be hybrid of any two. It depends, there are a lot of packages on ground. You may just want to learn basic IT skill sets. Yeah, just to put ideas on the ground. So, I mean, it's gonna be doing quite a lot of that. But you may be just that, that is what you need. So whatever you need, please let us know. And that is, that's gonna be an addition to any package anyway. And let me know, that's my detail there. The phone is there, you can WhatsApp, you can email me. There are a lot of emails, but that's basic. There is academy at and I put the website there. That's coming. So if you check the website at the moment, um, it's going to tell you it's under the construction. And I'll tell you why uh, before I answer some questions. I'll tell you why because I need to make us understand where we are. If you want to start your career now, this is the best time. Yeah, best time because uh, uh, um, um, we're complying with uh, the, uh, the, the sort of policy or whatever agreement is put in place for us to do to stay safe and all that. And I encourage that. But while you're doing that, it's a plan. I always tell people it's a time to plan and prepare. If you're the type that prays, it's a time to pray, plan, and prepare. It's a three piece kind of error for you. So you don't just sit back, you get more time to plan. But at the, end, at the same time, you're thinking of what happens after. Now, there are a lot of jobs out there. I can't, if I was talking to a recruiter this morning, and I was saying, it was like, it was like, oh, I find find I said, I'm not in the market. But the surprising thing is, I'm still surprised that companies are still recruiting massively. It's contrary to not, not all, don't get me wrong. But there are some very essential, there are some companies that ask their businesses, it doesn't stop, basically. It doesn't stop. Things are still going on. So it's a time for you to, you have most of the time now that we don't be so, we don't be so hard. Some people can't be free for three hours. It's just because they have to make ends meet and they have to, they have to pay. I don't really, I mean, there's something you can do about that. But why not now? So it starts something now. So I said, I'm going to show you. So what's coming up very soon, yeah? The first phase is coming up. In the next couple of weeks, it's our system. Now, our system is for all. It's for both of both ourselves and fifth day. I've had a thorough discussion with Dr. Kudai on this. He's aware of the project from the scratch. Uh, so now it's a system for the group. And now it's coming up soon. So if you check the website now, um, the three domains, the group domain, the academy, all.com, academy.com, also academy of consulting or group. Um, it's pretty much because it's a two-way side of business. Um, two ways in the sense that you're working on project coming from consultants, I get business from industries. Um, but what you're looking at is um, you're looking at the academic sites, the skills that you'll be learning, the sort of tools you'll be using, yeah, the target group, like I told you, the ambitious, the graduate, the career changers, and those that have left up for a while, the sort of roles you can get, we present you with all that. And again, we're going to present you with a lot of projects, which I'm going to show you on the other side. Your project will be coming up on the consulting side. We have a lot of projects for businesses. BAU request and all that, and that's the side of the business. All this is going to be live in the max two weeks time. Now, now, that's not the interesting part. The interesting part of it is wherever you are, wherever you are, be ready for this uh, platform. Be ready for this platform. Uh, that's the overall set of it all. 
the rest of this all is if you register, you're going to have a virtual login. Every tool you are asking me will be on this platform. Now, every classroom you get, just like we are having now, if you're scared, oh, yeah, someone is fine now. Location or your, your location is no more a limitation now. The challenge with this current situation now, people now understand that you can actually work for more. You can actually work everywhere. You know, the good thing is, I already brought up the concept before you even started. Now, this concept is a common life. Now, it's a full working environment. Now, now this project, if you want to be part of it, it's a very good one, and if you could learn from it, it will benefit you. Charlie, the second phase of it. Now, the second phase is going to give you a platform that is personal to you. When I mean personal, you have your own area. Have study. Everything you study is specific to you. Specifically, in the sense that if your course is here, you're only seeing your course details. And you can register for your course. You can add all materials. Video material that you're asking for is going to be there. Material, PDF, all the tools you use will be accessible. Microsoft Project, Microsoft Office, your Balsamic Notebook, your Jira, your Confluence, your VCO, any tool you need will be on the platform. So you have all you need in there. Then you have projects to work on. Now, you're going to be working on projects and you have projects specific to you that you can see within your own area. Now, how it works is, okay, let me still stay on that page. This is how it works. It works in four phases. The okay, phase one is where, if you're coming for a training, the academic workplace. This one is the academic area where you take your classroom. You might come in, you might not take a class. You move to your consulting workplace. Your consulting workplace is the area where your project is going to be executed. All your projects will be listed there. And under the consulting workplace, you have what we call the PMO area, the project management office area. And within that area, you see all your templates. Project templates is there, your deliverables are there. Every document you're working on, you can upload. Everybody can see it. You can see. So it's a collaborative platform. You can pick up a tool, work on the project, and deploy it there. If not, someone has got to approve it. So a project manager approves every upload before you can see it. Just to put a check in place. Now, when you are going through the training and you work on projects, periodically you're going to be appraised. There's going to be performance appraisal. Your um at two different levels basically. So you've got to be uh, sort of um you've got to be comfortable with what you're doing. Theoretically, you've got to understand that you understand what you're doing. So yeah, we're going to appraise you part your classroom stroke a little bit of your practical work level. Now, you could be moved up from being a trainer to being to be a trainee to being a trainer. Now, if you jump, if you jump up from being a trainee to being a consultant. Consultants are on this platform. Mentors are on the platform. Now, everybody is on this platform. And they appraise you for your proficiency as well. So proficiency is the next level you're going to be at. If you pass those levels, then the next stage for you, first stage is decide you want to work for us or you want to then move on. Of which we're going to give you the reference. And these are the roadmaps you're going to be following. Once you discover your career path, we induct you on the platform, you go through the classroom. Now, when you go through the classroom, you work on projects, we mentor you, we appraise you, then we recommend you. Easy. Now, but you could come in to work for us. Like I always say, you could come in that, you know what, Joe, I like the concept, I just want to be part of it. Why not? Speak to me. I mean, let's let's have a talk about it. I bring you on board. That's not a problem. Or you could come in to say, oh, you know, I just want training and I want to move on from there. Again, anything you want, please get in touch. I'll go back to that slide. Uh, get in touch. Get in touch with myself. Get in touch with Dr. Kuda IC for those people that knows him. Um, that's my detail. And we'll be able to uh, do something together. Now, the session doesn't end. Someone was asking me earlier today, or oh, does it end? No. I've been doing training since 2014. I train people right from my church. I train people just on anything. Now, I started with SQL. Uh, people on the platform, some people, I don't know, maybe some people are still there. I train people on SQL. I teach you anything I know. That's the thing. And that's how I started. Now, I've trained a lot of people on business analysis, on project management, on data analysis, um, uh, pretty much on the uh, south side of my of United Kingdom, um, or, or south of south side, yeah, basically down south. Now, up north, I've trained people as well. Yeah. Now, so there is there's there are a lot of people that's always asking, how come you know you don't you don't broadcast now? Now I I, I I wasn't like that. I only pick what I can manage. And someone was asking, I said that's it. it my classroom wasn't more than I mean, I don't used to take more than 16. Max between 12 and 16 because I run in the premier in basically. I run my meetings in premier and do the training. I make sure I can deliver. So I make sure I monitor those systems and I guide them through. Then I pick in another set. Then I do that. But now we've got more, more ends and I've got the time and there are more ends on deck. Then I can take as many as possible. But the one thing you can be guaranteed is there's going to be that personal touch. 
personal coach in the sense that I'll personally mentor you whatever you're learning. I need to know where you are, what you want, and try as much as I can to deliver that. Please, the session is not ending. The training is an ongoing. I do training every Saturday. Now, every, what I mean is, I normally before I travel every Saturday to do deliver training, people on the program can tell that. Because I used to tell anywhere, if I have a training, someone is arriving to London before I don't even the platform, invite me to London for a training. I travel to London books, books there. I deliver it there and I'll leave. And that's it. So I might have people in a particular town, 15 people, I'll set you up for four weekends and I will go with the right. Then I'll always go to mentor you and just do what I have to do. But now it's changed because we're having a platform very soon. Please like us on our social media platform. There's a correct, there's a reason for that. That's why you're going to have all the videos. So follow us, give us put feedback on the social media platform so that you can again know when our platform is coming live. You could follow on updates. So you see it as it comes. Now, the first 50 people that are registered on that platform, I guarantee you it's free. Now, if you register on the platform, it's going to be free. Now, before your platform, now you can start your program. Now, I don't know how you want to do. You want to wait or you want to start now? Now, you can start now. Talk to me. It's not about the money. Talk to me and let's discuss. Let's discuss. I'm going to cost something. Basically, nothing is kind of everything costs something. But now, it's not about the money. We deliver a lot of sessions for free. Definitely, I can guarantee you that. So, like I said, get in touch, like us on Facebook, on all the social media platforms, give us feedback. There is a freebies. There are a lot of freebies for that. There are a lot of freebies. If you do that, I will know and I will tell you the freebies. I won't tell you now because people will go do it. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of freebies for it. If you do the right thing, there are a lot of freebies. So I'll give the platform to Dotun briefly for the last five minutes. Ah. All right, Dutton is not there. Any question from anybody? I'm going to open everyone up. If your background is free, I'm unmuting everybody. Hello? Hello? Uh, Joe, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, please. I was wondering if you could throw a bit more light on uh, the roadmap process. Uh, is it something that's going to run uh, uh, through virtual or online or a combination of physical presence and uh, online? Uh, please. Uh, depending on your location, quite a lot will be online because it's a system. Now, Quite a lot of them would be just as we are meeting now, quite a lot, because of, I, 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 I mean, I've sort of integrated into the system quite a lot of applications. Now, applications as to the level of Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams will automatically load you on. We must actually load up as soon as you open the system. So I can tell when you are on. Now, it picks you, your, now, you know how Skype works. That's how the system is going to work. Once you log in, I can see you can message me live and direct. You can set up a meeting and see me the way you're seeing me now. So location is not a limitation. Uh, like I said, the world is going to the air to the, to the point where, not because you are 50 miles away from me, and we can't get it, but we can't deliver. No, you can do the work. Now, there's a lot of things I can do now as I'm doing it, you're seeing it. There are a lot of applications for that. There's a lot of tools for that. Now, when we're working, we're even working together. We can even be looking at it. It depends on what is needed. So again, now, if people, someone living next to me, if I'm training you and you just want to pop in as a friend, why not pop in? We can rub mine. That's not a problem. But the thing is, we shouldn't use that as a limitation to people. That's why I'm bringing a system that I've, I've sort of put in all sort of uh, honesty requirements, all sort of persona have been, uh, have been sort of um, uh, considered to develop that. And I think it should be fit for purpose for everyone. Someone asked, what's the best, what best, whatever, to get in touch with you, what best to get in touch with you WhatsApp email or direct phone call. Depends on where you are. If you, my number is free for you to call. Why not call the one that ends with 0179? Now, if not, you can WhatsApp. Or if I miss your call anyway, I'm always going to return. Return the call. If it's free for you to call, call me. If not, WhatsApp me or send me an email. So it depends. Again, there are lots of different communication. You may call and miss it and return the call. Uh, you may call and WhatsApp me that, oh, I just called you and I'll know who you are then now. Yeah, like I said, I, will, I have our details, so please do we all accept. If you don't want me to send you an email or to tell to send you the video, 
or to add you to the our group chat platform on Telegram or Skype uh, or, or WhatsApp, rather, please message me and to opt out. But when you read start, I already put that description there, but I still have to ask you, yeah, to please opt out and tell me, please don't add me, please don't send me a message, please, please make use of that opportunity on any platform and I will do according. If not, I'm going to send one of us, uh, we're going to get an email tonight, actually. Um, you get a certificate for each day. So for the first day, if you attend the first day, you get a certificate tonight. So you receive an email with a certificate for first day. And uh, tomorrow, you see the certificate for yesterday. Yeah. And on Saturday, you see your certificate for today. And the video will follow after that for the three days. So you have all that. Any material you need to get in touch with me, I will give it to you where I will But if you don't want me to send you any message right email, I won't do that. But please, for now, if you don't tell me, I will do that. Yeah, but until you opt out. Now, for people who want to switch career, how do we break into the market, especially as it entails having experience in the and PM? That's the essence of the platform. I've got six, I've got, I got the current, I used to have six projects. Now I have four projects going on. The biggest is the one I've shown you. Now, there's a UX designer working on that currently. Now, the project is just started. We haven't approved, we're just at it in the design space. Now, it's the best time for you to get experience. That's what I'm saying. I'm putting a platform. Now, currently, I work from home, right? I work from home every day. Now, I don't know how you work. A lot of people work from home. Now, do we deliver? Yes. Do I have meetings? Yes. I have daily scrum meetings. Yeah, half past eight every morning from my house. That's the way I'm sitting here. That's my home office. I have daily scrum meetings here. I get out of my bed, I move to my home office, and I have a, I have, I have a meeting. Then I go about doing other The same way it's going to work on our platform. Everything, I don't know. Tell me the two a PM, a BA, a data analyst, or anybody in office use in office now. Tell me. I'll tell you I have more than that on that system. That's how big we are making that project. Everything is there. Okay? So how you can break in, in is to register now. Get in touch with me after tonight, not now. Like I said to someone earlier, let me deliver tonight. Then contact me. Let's discuss. Let's talk. Let me know what you want. Let me know where you are, and I'll draw up a plan for you. Now, your plan for you may not work. The plan for Mr. A doesn't have to work for Mr. B. It's based on your, like, I'm a BA, I'm a PM, I'm a data and BI analyst. So I work with requirements. I pick requirements from people as well. I don't work with people just like that. No, I need to know your requirements. And I need to size you up. I do gap analysis. I need to do that as well. It's practical. This thing, all these things are practical. It applies to life. I need to know where you are and where you're going and size up. Now, what's the difference between where you are and where you're going? That's gap analysis. The current situation as is and the future situation, the to be. So what's the difference between to be and the current? I need to size that up and see what I need to fill that gap. And the only thing I can, the only way I can do that is not by telling you, oh, no, I don't, I'm not a sugar butter person. I'm not like a business person, businessman. No, I want to make this in part of people's life. Unfortunately, sometimes it costs some money, but I can guarantee you, you get transfer of your money. Guarantee, that's me. Now, go and write it down. Everybody that brings me, ask them. Yeah, you can ask them that. So, now, it's not a majority. You can tell yourself later. Yeah? Now, so the best way for you to break in is to please get it. So, let's discuss it. There's a lot of job out there. All you need is know what you need, the skill set, and get someone to guide you through it so that you know exactly what you want. Starting now. All right, I don't get that. That's not right, All right, do you expect a registered candidate to work full time? What is the work time at now? You don't have to work full time. No, no, no. In fact, I don't expect you to work full time. That's because the reason that we understand everyone has a daily job anyway. So that's the reason for the platform. For example, I meet with some people on Saturdays. I meet with some people on Sundays. I meet with some people on evenings. I meet with some people in the afternoons. So it depends. That's why I say get it done. What works for Mr. A doesn't work for Mr. B. I have someone I train single. I mean, because our sort of requirement doesn't fit into a group requirement. I have to say, okay, she's free on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Okay, I've got to fix up time. Okay, you know what? I can do Tuesday total time. Then we agree on the time. Two hours on Tuesday, two hours on Thursday, I do you two hours on Saturday. So, but the group one, I won't let it clash with the Saturday one. So it depends on your requirement. Again, like I said, I'm a professional and I practice what I do at work on my own personal life. I'm on people as well. It also runs me. Please, let's understand that. And that's the way I want to build people up as well. The professional raise up the standard in everything you do. Let it put singularly just pick you out. It's not how big you are, it's not how light you are, or whatever. It's all in bit. It has to be in bit. and it will be seen when you have it. Definitely. Right. Any other person? 
Okay, thank you very much. Now, like I said, if you want to opt out, let me know. I'm going to create a group on that. Now, please, what you do for me is I'll create a general group so that we can exchange with people. Now, not really. Now, when I'm in a group, I don't operate a group where people send is professional, please. When I mean professional, it is professional. Anything outside that, please DM people, people you know. Don't DM people you don't know. Yeah, please. That's the rule. It's the rule of the game. Now, if I receive someone is there, that's it. The person is out. I run a very not real street. I run a standard. I run by a standard, and it has to be maintained, right? Now, that's going to be now be broken down. So, if you're doing BA, if I receive now, the reason I'm signing contact with, I need to know who is interested in business analysis. So, I collate the group. I need to know who is interested in data analysis. I collate the group. Program management. Collate the group. Then I know who is interested in an hybrid role, a BA, a BIBA analyst. Then I know I separate them. So I need to be able to sort of do that analysis. Don't forget your business analysis. You've got to analyze. Don't just rush into things. Yeah. Make sure you understand and break it down. Get the clearer view. Define your scope. Then you move on. That's why I ask you, contact me. Let me know your scope first. Then let's define the scope and know where you're going to go. And I drop a plan for you. I have a general rule plan that I always say. I drop your path. Then you'll be inducted. Then you do some classroom if you need to. Some people don't need it. You just need the practical. That's what I'm saying. So I won't put you on the classroom. On the session like the staff teaching you theory, you understand the theoretical concept. All you need to be is a guide on projects, run through series of projects with you, and I will be ready to work. Now, when I mean work, you do your normal day job, but when I give you a task, please, you have to do it. And you do it, you revert back, then we sit down, we go through it. Okay, this is wrong, this is right, push you forward, give you more tasks, give you to manage people, get to the deliver, and these are real projects. And sometimes that's why I tell people I work on real projects, so you don't joke with it. It's not a demo project, project X, Y, Z that won't end. No, I don't run that. I could create that if you want, but I run real life project with businesses, businesses, real businesses out there. There are two projects hanging on because of COVID 19 for the businesses now. You can still jump in on it. I could give it to you. Sometimes I need people to manage the project. Yeah, if you want to, I'll give you this current one to manage. I will answer and I'll let you control it. That is how you build the experience with the guidance of someone that's been there. To put you right, you do documentation, you have to sit down. That's the thing about the job. You have to be able to sit down, create time yourself to then document that I've created a use case of BRD for you. It doesn't mean that is it. No, go create yours and show me what you created. Then I'll point you to the right. That's fine. That's right. That's fine. You know, fantastic. You have a standard. You need to raise it. Then do the next one. Sit down and do your mock up. Draw it. Mock up will take time. I do a 33 pages website mock up. Single so Now, did, you, did I do it in a day? No. Maybe a couple of days, maybe not. Maybe because of mutual experience. But uh, fine. It could take you longer. But just do a page. That's that now. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. If you want to know, then you have to practice. Separate yourself sometime in a day. Maybe you sleep late or you wake up early or whatever way it works for you. Half an hour a day is not too bad. So add value to yourself. And that's why I tell you. You don't need eight hours a day. But if you want to come in, if you can guarantee me a week, I used to say eight hours a week. Monday, that's in seven days, give me eight hours. That's enough. Apart from your training, give me extra eight hours. That means literally an hour every day. This is something like that. That's enough. So which it doesn't mean every day, it means some day you give two hours and maybe another day, two hours, maybe the next day you just give three hours on Saturday or weekend. You spread two hours during the week or an hour, an hour, an hour, and you spend four hours during the weekend. That's enough. It's enough to end to end somewhere, to have someone that has a goal needs to put up a plan. You have an objective, a goal, there has to be a plan. Set up a plan like the previous break it down. Do a work with plan structure. What is the roadmap? Yeah. What's your mission? What are our objectives? Now, if you have objective, what strategy do you want to use to implement it? Objective. If you don't stop at strategy, you have to raise up, set up the tactics. Those are the processes, the list of action you want to take to arrive there. Now, I could help you in that if I know where you are. Again, we are um, not really like the but I can't ask everyone to start telling me that now. So you contact me one-on-one, -on -one, WhatsApp call, email me, I can call you. WhatsApp me, I can call you. You can set up a time. Let's have like a Zoom meeting, like this day. Let's celebrate or talk on the phone. I know where you have your plan, but we can start in. But I need to know what you want to do. Now, you're asking me what happens. Now, the BA, you're interested in BA and PM. Message me, please. WhatsApp me. And with your name, if I don't have it, let me stop it. But the thing is, I'll generate a general report on this platform. Yeah, but the general report will give me loads of charts. I have to spend a lot of time. They want to give me some data, <laughs> data analyst job. If I have to figure out what everyone is said on this platform, that's another data analyst job. I can do that, but it's a better way. 
Yeah, simplify it for me. Send me a message. That's the that's the detail on the screen. Anyone you want to use, I'll get it. Anyone you want to use it, I'll get it. And again, like I said, follow us. Please give us feedback on social media. There's, there are freebies for that. I won't tell you what the freebies are, but it may, it may, it may, it may, it may, um, it may pay you more than what you can pay. Yeah. All right. Any other question? Uh, we're running nine minutes uh, extra. I, I'm up. I mean, the boss is the day three. Like I said. I run training every weekend. Yeah, because someone asked me earlier before the meeting. I have been doing it not yesterday. Yeah. Now let me see it on the platform so they can tell you. Uh Shell Jalo has been part of my training, but yeah, not really. Yeah, it's been a few times, definitely. Uh Jalo is in there. It's on the platform again. Okay, well, I've been here, Joe's been on my training before. Um, what else do I? I can do that people I know now. Okay, apart from uh, definitely my staffs. Sharon, Sharon, can I just open you up just for a minute? Uh, I know yeah, you started sure. with the one. Yeah, please just <laughs> record your but you need to, please. Oh, yeah, for those that went there on Monday, um. Um, well, I, I joined Joe's uh, training course in 2018. At the time, I was doing my master's in business analysis. So though I had the academic side, I didn't have the practical side. And I was introduced to him. Obviously, most of you will be a bit skeptical thinking, mm, will it work, will it not work? I would actually say it works. Because I was on the course um, in 2018. I graduated in December 2018, and I got my BA job the following year, like less than six six months. I landed a BA job. I mean, Joe will be with you throughout the course till the very end. Even now that I'm actually working as a BA, there are times that I get stuck on things that I need. You know, I need him to assist me. He's there on whatsapp you you send him a text you know he, he responds quickly i've been blessed by him because he's pushed me to my not to my limits i don't think i've reached my limits yet because i've been able to, i've come out as a business systems analyst stroke pm as well um and he's always encouraging you to do more and through his encouragements um within this short space of time i've been able to train as a uat a tester um you know, I'm still doing a lot of things, polishing my skills, because the sky is the limit. And as he said, you don't have to limit yourself to one particular um, course or subject. So I will encourage you, if you're serious enough, because one thing I've noticed with him is, if he identifies that you're a serious person, I don't want to use a candidate, but someone who aspires for more, he dedicates his time. Even if it's in the middle of the night, Joe will answer your call. So whoever is actually willing to go on this roadmap with him, I will assure you, if you're dedicated, he will be there to help. So please, 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 if you want to change career, this is the time to make the move. I used to be a project coordinator for the health service, and I needed a change after four years. So if you're willing to take the leap, I mean, he's your man. There are courses out there. There are people that will give you the jargon. And I'm not going to put you down, Joe, but compared to prizes out there, I'll say you get more for what he's going to give you. So take the leap. Take the leap. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to hear from you again. Um, thank you for that. Um, it's not, uh, I mean, don't just, um, don't base it on, what we're saying, uh, think of what you want. Uh, like that's why I always said, you want something, you want to go after it. So it's about, it's not because someone's saying, go get it now. Now, wherever I am today, it's what I aspire to become. I mean, like I told you, I was, I was seen as someone that was professional. I mean, someone is on the platform, I mean, who's known me as far back as then, when I was an engineer, 
um, yeah, uh, I, I used to tell me then I, I, I would be here for, I mean, he was even pushing me then, but I had a reason why I stayed there. I, I, but I knew like I was gonna move, but there was a reason why I stayed there. I had something I wanted to achieve. It was considered a professional job. People were like, you had a good job, right? Yeah, a professional, like was professional. But the thing is, I knew I could do more. So what I'm trying to say, know what you want. When you know what you want, then go after it. Yeah, not what people said you should do. That's the first thing. So please. Now, but when you're going after it, do your assessment properly. Do your assessment. Do your assessment. Um, wherever you go, know what you want and do the assessment that you're going to get it out of there. What I tell people is, you want to be a BA. Yeah, I go on the job portal. I print up a job. I print up a lot of job descriptions. And I'll try to concatenate the JDs, like uh, where, where do they meet, where do they match, which one is different. And I'll put all them together as sort of like uh, a, a, a sort of a, a composite, um, sort, sort of composite document. It sort of has everything, removing all the duplicates. Now, now, do you know how much of what they need do you know? That's, that's your guide. And that's why I tell people, you don't go through a training without knowing what you're looking to achieve. These are the things that the recruiters need. This is what I need to get. So we have to start taking the box. So create a checklist. Create a checklist for you. How many of them did you know? Now, if you don't need, now maybe you don't need someone to tell you the minimum requirement for you to get in the job. And that's why I always say people get in the job. So that is the, my starting point. I need to know what you know, what you have. Now, the reason for that again is what industry have you been before? Now, some people be like, I want to change my job. I don't want this part to appear on my CV. No, there's a way it can appear. I told you by engineering industry, CF me, my last contract. Well, it looks current, but it's kind of it's becoming the last now because starting up another contract actually next week. So again, what I'm saying again is um, um, it, it's you need to get someone to align those things together. It, it, no experience in life is lost. Now, how you can use it is what you need to get. That previous experience may look it is not useful, but maybe someone just needs to tell you how useful it will be. And that's the reason why I asked you to call. Now, we're, we're getting put, yeah? Getting put means we address individuals differently. Your requirement will be different. The time you'll pay is different. What you've done before is different. Now, what you need will be different. That's the way I run. I run based on that. I don't want to put 200 people on the platform and ask you what to be doing the same thing. Then confusion will start with me. You don't even know if you're a B or a PM or a data analyst, because you're just joining everything together. And again, that's why I'm putting segregation on the platform that we're running out very soon. Um, that whatever you're doing is what you see. You only see what you're meant to see. You don't see what you're not meant to see. It keeps you in focus. It keeps you focused, yeah? And it drives you towards your end. And again, we draw up a plan for you anyway. You know where you're going and we assess you for time. And that's the structure I'm creating. I don't, I don't want to create a structure that would work, a structure that works. It doesn't need to work as others work. It needs to work the right way I think it will work. You need to work with the right organization if you, do two projects with me. Now, if you join me on the project and you're ready to work, now just do that trial. Join me on the project, ready to work, see where you are after that project. I think then you can then make your decision after that. Uh, any other question? I don't want to see more, more than that. Any other question? Okay. Um, I know someone is interested in a joy. Please message me. Uh, first of the second number on the screen and put your name and so that we know that. I can start drawing up the, uh, the list. But Facebook page has not got the ad friendly. Yes, it's a page you follow or you like. Then I'll get your name as you like the page. Now, if you look for my name, you want to add me as friend, then look for my name on Facebook. That's my real name, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> then go like the page. The Facebook page is important. If you want to follow me as a friend, it's my Facebook page that you're going to look for. Yeah. If you want to do that, oh, sorry, I'm typing some else. Okay. I'm going to put the name you're going to look for. Uh, I'll add here a little bit. That's it. Okay. Okay, but what I said, you like the page, the page is the like or follow. You follow a page, you like the page, it's not like an entity to have a strength. Let's answer your question or you message me and then uh, message me for that. Okay. Um, 
Have I missed any question? The first is at day three, like I said, later today, or maybe even now, I don't know, maybe you will see the email, I don't know yet, but you're gonna get your uh, confirmation of your first day, and tomorrow you get confirmation of the second day, and if you attended, just today you get that confirmation on Saturday. Now, following that, if you've added us, liked us, if you've given us feedback on Facebook, you'll be able to see all the videos on Facebook and on our um, YouTube channel. All the videos, the three videos will be available, all of them. So anybody can watch, you can make this of them. If you need any material, you need to know what book you need to get, or you want to do your certification, guaranteed you're going to pass. If I take you through just the basic training, you are. It's a one season certification. I, I, I always tell people that and it's never fair. Because I teach everything I teach is based on the curriculum for the certification. I work on BCS book. If you are in this part of the world right now, uh, if you're looking for the IIBA, I, still, I work on that part of the bar book. Yeah, I work on that as well. So I put everything together to make sure you are right on top. It's the standard. And I told you on Monday, that's what I try to do. I try to set the standard, look up with the standard. And I don't end there, I try to be a better professionally, you got to set up the standard. Now, lastly, please don't joke with your LinkedIn page. Oh my God, I should have said that first. That was my message, my sermon. I used to preach that a lot. Uh, far back as 2013, 2014, if I, if I need to, I'll tell you about LinkedIn, how powerful LinkedIn can be. Don't joke with it. Almost all the job I get is through LinkedIn, almost all, maybe 90%. I don't, I can't remember the last time I applied for a job. I'm not joking. I mean, it's all humility. I can't remember that I sit down to apply now. Nah. Now. Nah. Nah. Within the contract, I started, I got another one to start next week. I'm still within one. Just have to pull out of one. Within one. Not joking. It's all humility. It's all good. Now, nah. within the same one this morning, I got the call. Like I said, if an agile business owner, you want to pick it up, I can recommend. This morning, this is where I sat this morning. Where I got the call. And the guy was telling me. Like was literally saying, it's possible. Can I just, even if you're not free, can I send your CV? Let them hear from you. Maybe you can make an offer, or maybe they can meet up with something. Now, it's just your profile sometimes. It doesn't have to be fantastic. Don't joke with your LinkedIn. I act in that aspect as well. I didn't mention that your CV, yeah, we're going to review it together. It's part of everything. I mean, that's nothing. So I look through your CV, we work on it together, we make it workable on the platform, on all social media platforms, all uh, job portal, basically. Make your CV workable on audio photo. Your LinkedIn has to be on point. Now, not really the best, but able to command some attention when people see you. That's your professional platform. Don't joke with it. If you don't like using LinkedIn, please, I'm going to preach. I need to try to convert you uh, to that kind of person that will start liking it. It's not a social media platform. If you add me on LinkedIn, I've been like that for a long time. Add me on LinkedIn, I check what you do. You say you are this and this and that. It's not related. I think that like that's not for LinkedIn. Sorry, <laughs> my LinkedIn is my professional platform. I don't. Now we have to have something in our life. It's like you're a recruiter. You are in. A, you have a company, or you have to do something. Not oh, just some random people send you some messages on LinkedIn, or they send you an invite, and I check their profile. What do they do? They are self-employed somewhere. I don't even know. Doing ABC. Some funny as an. I say that's not. It's not for that. Maybe that's for Facebook, if I don't really, well, anyway, that's for the little. So any question for now? Your, my Facebook page, I've answered that. Interested in VA, send me a message, okay? I don't know if Dr. Two, could I see is still there, or I try to get his attention, I can, but anyway, um, uh, with all this for that. Just the roadmap. Process require physical presence on online. If you are available, I can meet up with anybody. I mean, yeah, it, it, could, it could just be a friend. I do let's catch up next weekend. But why not? I'll give you the time. Just let me know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's catch up. Yeah. Uh, let's catch up. Let's have some time together. Let's celebrate. Yeah. But mostly, we're building a system that works pretty much like uh, that person. We want to try and make it work. It. Please, I need your help uh, in that aspect as well. The blue list okay. I think I've answered all the questions. Thank you very much, everyone, for the uh, for the pre-date um, our session. I believe it's been useful for us one way or the other. I believe you've been able to pick one thing or the other. But like I said, if you're going on with this course, it's an ongoing course. I run every weekend. But let me know what you want, where you are. Let's talk. And um, message me what course exactly, what program. 
that's why I call it what program you want to do. I don't run a university, it's not what program you want um, to take off, basically. So the program you want to take off, you could work a program out for you that will help that will suit your purpose based on where you're going and where you are. I always work something out for you, specific to you, or it could be a general thing, depends. It depends on what you want. Then we just address the skill set you need to bring on board, the techniques, the tools you need to know. We go through them in practical in detail, not on the uh, high level side, the simplest point. We pick it from the easiest part that makes you, that gives you the um, um, access to the job ladder as quickly as possible. Then from there, uh, like Sharon mentioned earlier, it will improve yourself. I mean, I didn't start being an hybrid person of three roles in one. Now, I started as a one person, but I didn't stop there. I started putting on uh, more uh, interests of skill sets. Uh, maybe some people, some of us learn to kind of the other. And again, that's why I said individually, it might be different. Uh, so we need to talk, basically. Thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate our presence. And uh, hopefully, we're going to catch you again soon. A lot of sessions will be coming up. Like that's why I said, get in touch, like us, you see as we put it up. I'm going to be running shorter sessions now. We're going to be specific. I uh, might be running a session very soon on project management, how to manage an effective sort of uh, effective approach to project management and all the tools, specifically practical. Now, no theory again, so I believe you understand it. If it's needed, I'll bring you some aspect of it, a practical delivery of project management, using the tools, creating a project plan, monitoring the project, how you control a project, the sort of documentation you do. And the same thing we do for business analysis as well. That's the core. We're going to deliver all that. And you can be a good VA in any environment, a good digital VA, a good business VA. We approach that. If you have any subject I wanted to teach, you can get in touch. You can always address it. But I'll be running just shorter sessions now. Uh, I will get in touch with you if you just do the, um, as, as you've been asked to do, get in touch, like us, and give us feedback on Facebook and uh, Instagram and all the other platforms. So you get information as we have it available. Again, I will create that, um, a group chat for everyone. Or I will sort of categorize that based on what you're doing as you go along with finding space to learn what to do. Thank you very much everyone and have a very wonderful um, rest of the day. It is a night. Have a good night and please stay safe and keep everyone safe. God bless you.